Welcome back to the To Be Better podcast. Before we get into the intro, we have a little bit of a disclaimer that we need you to hear. We are not the experts of your life. You are. We believe that most relationships can be saved. However, both parties have to want it and both parties have to be willing to do the work. So we speak in generalizations. If it applies to 90% of the population and you're part of the 10% that it doesn't, it can be adapted to fit the narrative you're going with. And it's up to you to make that adaptation. It's not up, up to us to cater to every single living being on the planet. We just want to get the information out there and you can make it applicable to your life as you see fit. So whether you decide to stay or decide to leave, you still have to make the changes that are necessary to grow. If you fail to do the work, you're going to fail in your next relationship. So why not do the work now before quitting? All right. So in emailing us, you are asking us for our unbiased, unfiltered opinions. If you're not ready to hear our opinions, do not email us. And there are certain topics that we will not discuss on this podcast, such as domestic violence, SA, or other assaults and addiction. Or children being abused. Speaking of the emails, if you guys are going to send us an email, please be as detailed as possible. Take a second to proofread what you have sent and make sure that you have punctuation, because if you have one long paragraph that is a run-on sentence and it is a difficult thing for us to read, we're not going to sit down and retype your email just for us to be able to read it on the podcast. It will get moved into a rejected folder and we will never see it. And last but not least, if you're not interested in having your, your email read on our podcast, do not submit an email. We do not do direct emailing answers. It is a scratch our back. You, we scratch yours. You send email for our content. We give you the, the opinions that you're asking for. And uh, if you would like to have your email submitted, you can send it to to be better co at gmail.com. The number two, be better co at gmail.com. And episode 23, we are back. That's a good number, 23. Yep. You think we're going to make it through it this time? Because last time we tried this, I got mad and quit. We'll see. We'll see how well this goes. So I'm I'm, I'm going to make changes to this room. Oh, okay. Yep. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. Yeah, because these are getting changed out. You don't like them? I, I hate these microphone stands. Okay. Um, I, I know that the road mic things would fit in here, the ones that we have in the other podcast room, but because we hardly ever record in there anymore, I'm just going to swap them out. Okay. I'd rather deal with them every once in a while than every single time we sit down. So are we just nixing I, that room back I, there? I, I, that may happen. Real okay. shit that may happen. And it sucks because I just bought all this extra stuff. It wouldn't be bad to keep that every once in a while just to kind of change the routine of things and the look of stuff. But I really like this room. Me too. Like I feel good when I sit in here. Mm -hmm. So. I get that. <clears throat> and. Um, I did, I did post, Ooh. holy pee on that one. Huh? <laughs> um, I did post the, um, dating episode of the side piece, which is episode 12, which is going to come out. I actually think the same week this will, mm -hmm. um, I gave that an early release to Patreon. So they got that this morning. They're loving it. Yeah. The amount of people that like that room looks so good. Oh, yep. I thought you meant just like the side piece. They're, they're loving the side piece yeah. too, but I'm, I'm hooked on the room right now. Yeah, I'm really vibing with how this room looks. I kind of want to redo the whole house. Yeah. I like this vibe. It's very minimalistic. It's calming. You want to just redo the, the, the podcast room then? I mean, we have all the shit. It doesn't make sense to get rid of it. What do you mean redo it? Like, just repaint it, move some shit around and make it work so that we can like keep this set up out there. Yeah. I'm down for that. It's not, we already own everything. Would it's, you want to do white walls with the black chairs? I do not want to do white walls. No. Nope. The, I mean, that would, maybe, maybe. I didn't think about that because the chairs are black. Yeah. Do the opposite of this room. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I can also put my plants in all over the place. Yeah. It'll look very nice. I, I'm down to just have a different look. I, I, okay. I really thought that I was going to like that, like, lavender purple color that we have on the walls yeah me too it just doesn't look right right it did for like the first three or four days i was vibing with it mm -hmm. and now when i sit in there it just it feels very like discombobulated barney to yeah. me I, I don't i just don't like it i get that i just don't like it but i am definitely stealing the tables from out of there though i support that i would like End a tables. place to put things right i need to be able to set my drink down yeah um <clears throat> 
I also think that because of where that third camera sits, it might be beneficial for us to move the mics to the other side of the chair. The only downside of that, because then you won't be able to see them over here. You know what I mean? They would just come across and you'd be able to see them, but I'm worried about how it'll affect our, our other cameras. Right. And learning curves. That's all it is. A lot going on. I do want to change your desk out too. Okay. I, I know that like that desk has served us well. And I, I found a way to mount that microphone stand to it. It just looks very bad in here. It matches the floor. That's dope. Yeah. But kinda. it doesn't match anything else. And no. if we did change that out and we were doing those desks as our like sit down thing, mm -hmm. I can take the other C-stand out of the closet, mount one of those cameras to the C-stand up high and aim it down with a 24 millimeter lens or a 16 millimeter lens and get that whole half the room. Oh, like another third angle. I would just have to clean the shelf off and make that a thing. You're so smart. This is what I do, video stuff. You're really stuff. good at it. You're really good. Lots of trial and error. I'm glad you know how to do this because I don't. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. I'm just here for the ride. Yeah. We, oh, I almost said something really inappropriate about rides. Yeah. Keeping it keeping it PG-13 for the first half of the episode. My mind is not. Yeah. <laughs> Mine either, apparently. Um, I have a question for you. Oh, I enjoy questions. Do you know what the word psychosomatic means? Psychosomatic? Mm-hmm. I know what the words mean individually, but together. Okay. What do they mean individually? So psycho is, I might get it confused with psychotic, but they are void of feeling. They have no empathy. They recognize that their actions have repercussions and they don't care about the repercussions. Okay. And soma? Is it somatic? No. Okay. So psychosomatic actually broken down as two words, psycho right. and soma, meaning the mind and the body. Soma. Soma. S-O-M-A. I did not know it means that. the body. Um, I have the actual definition. Okay. But my understanding of what psychosomatic is, is that you are able to literally make yourself sick by your thoughts. Okay. If you have heart disease and you're stressed out, you make yourself sick. If you have it. ulcers, you get stressed out. You can make your ulcers worse, mm -hmm. right? There are a whole other slew of things that play into that mindset. But the actual definition is of a physical illness or other condition caused or aggravated by mental factors such as internal conflict or stress. I did not retain any of that. You Can I read it? Yeah. <laughs> Look out, internet. I just handed her my phone. <gasps> Whatever you do, <laughs> don't go through it. I, I actually didn't even think of that. <laughs> That's insane. Caused or aggravated. Right. By a mental factor. Right. Your mental state which you are in charge of, right. you have choices. Can affect your entire body. That's crazy. So I, I am, uh, full disclosure, I'm reading Choice Theory. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going back through it a second time because there's so much information in that book that I missed a lot the first time I read it, whether it was because I was doing other things or hypnosis while driving, because it's a very real thing for me sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I miss some things. So I'm running back through it. <clears throat> and as much hate as I'm going to get for what I'm about to say, I'm standing by my choice to state this. I no longer believe that depression is one of those things that just happens to you and you have no control over. I agree with that. I firmly believe that depression is a choice. Coming from somebody who has been clinically depressed, has borderline personality disorder, and has struggled with my depression, suicidal depression, my mm -hmm. entire life, I understand now that all of that is a choice. You want to, like... You want me to elaborate on that? Do you have any thoughts or so, questions before I move on? My thoughts are I, I also am clinically diagnosed with severe depression, suicidal depression. It is definitely a choice. There are days where I wake up and I want to do absolutely nothing. I want to wallow in bed. I want to focus on all of the negative shit and just be in my feels. Right. Those are the days that I push myself to put my feet on the floor, to get up, brush my teeth, do the dishes, sit down and record read whatever book I have to read for the week, make the notes that we need for the podcast, take care of the kids, be your wife. I make those choices despite my depression Okay. to still get up. So when you do that, do you notice that throughout the day your depression eases up? It definitely, yeah, there's a change. It doesn't go away, that, that lingering despair and nothing is ever going to go right. It does lessen. It's more, so in the mornings I wake up, it's like someone has a bullhorn and they're shouting, Today's going to be a shitty day. You're a horrible human being. And as I go through my day, it becomes more quiet. Right. It turns into a whisper. I can still notice it. I still hear it every once in a while, but it's not as prevalent in my mind because I am doing things to keep myself active. Right. 
So you're making a choice. Yeah. To not let your depression override your everything. Yeah, I'm stronger than my depression. Okay. So we know that drugs like Prozac are serotonin boosters because there's a theory that people who have clinical depression have a chemical imbalance in their brain. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. That's been debunked. That whole okay. theory that we've heard from the last 80s, 90s, and early 2000s is not true. You have physiological changes that happen in your brain when you are depressed versus when you're not, just like when you're in lust or in love, your brain is going to react to those scenarios by releasing chemicals and doing those things. It's not an imbalance. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that you're perceiving your reality. Prozac increases serotonin. You get a dopamine response sometimes. It's supposed to help you elevate your mood, but it masks your depression. So it's fake happiness. Right. You are basically using meds to mask what you're dealing with. No different than people who drink. I was getting ready to say that sounds like heroin. <laughs> it, right. Or do drugs. Yeah. So in psychology, psychotherapy, when you are prescribed a serot serotonin boosters because you are massively depressed, they mm -hmm. do that so that you can then start working through your problems. Because simply taking the drug only masks what you're going through. It does not fix the underlying root of the issue. So are you saying that depression medication is to mask the depression in the beginning so that you can go, okay, I'm not feeling as bad as I was. I can be more productive in solving my problems. Right. It's a crutch. It is an aid used to get you to start therapy and working through your problems so that you can learn how to process your shit and get better. So for all the people who go to therapy just to get diagnosed and get on medication, then don't continue therapy. They find themselves dealing with um, mm. medication issues, mm -hmm. jumping from med to med to med because eventually it stops working. They build a tolerance. They start taking other meds on top of that, which will create a um, unknown combination of shit in the body. We don't know how all drugs are going to react in every single person because it's different from people. Mm -hmm. But that is step one to healing. Right. So for people who don't do that and they self-medicate and they are not willing to do the work on themselves and they live in that depressive I'm the victim mind state, they stay that way. Mm -hmm. They don't ever get any better. They're not going to improve it. That's just the way it is. Now, <clears throat> let's say, and this is also proven, that you are starting to feel depressed, right? You, you wake up in the morning and you just feel off. It happens to us all the time. Mm -hmm. We know that when you exercise, you get a serotonin boost and a dopamine response. So if you run or you do something physical exertive, the, the re release in your body actually makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. That's why runners who love to run, run. We go do cardio. We do two, two miles every morning. Mm -hmm. From the time I wake up, it takes me about 30 to 45 minutes to even have a conversation with you because my brain is so foggy. I have to take time to get my wits about me. Mm -hmm. I can't have, I can talk to you. We can talk minuscule shit. But if you want to have a life conversation and I've only been up for 30 minutes, I, I need like an hour. But if we wake up, go straight to the park, do our cardio. And, and my first hour and a half of the day is that two mile walk that we have. Mm -hmm. My entire day is different than it would be if I took an hour and a half to get acclimated and then go do that. It's not giving me the time to wallow in my self pity. I'm making a decision the moment I wake up going, okay, I don't feel good today. Let's go. We're going to go do cardio. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I am making a decision to give myself a serotonin boost and while we're walking, we discuss what's going on with me and why I feel bad. And I'm able to work through my problems, find the root of it, mm -hmm. and then logic brain think past that. Yep. I know that this is going to sound very unpopular to everyone because people don't want to believe in choice theory. They, it's easier to just wallow in your pity, be the victim, get people to feel sorry for you than it is to work through your bullshit. Mm -hmm. If this was not factual and you went to a therapist, there would be nothing that the therapist could do to help you. Accurate. Because you would not be working through your problems, mm -hmm. finding out what the root is, and then making decisions to get better. That is effectively what therapy is. Mm -hmm. So for the last three days, I have been really heavy on this whole depression is a choice thing. And from now on, when I start to feel down or I start to feel like I'm going through something, instead of just making the decision to isolate or sit around and fucking feel sorry for myself, I'm going to get up and go do cardio or I'm going to go to the gym immediately. Like I'm going to start doing things and, and getting that away from me as quickly as I can, because the longer you're in that depressive state, the harder it is to get out of it because you get so used to just feeling like that. Mm -hmm. You just accept it. I, I'm not accepting that shit anymore. Oh, no. We also know 
that your mental health is directly correlated with your gut health. So if you're eating fast food, you're eating pizza, you're drinking soda constantly, you are not doing anything to take care of your physical body along with your mental aspect, Mm -hmm. it's going to get worse. So when you're depressed and you don't want to do anything or you emotionally eat and you're picking sugary diet foods like or sugary uh, dessert foods, comfort foods, you're eating macaroni and cheese, pastas and fucking pizzas and Mm -hmm. all that shit, you are deregulating your gut health. It's all so good though. Which is going to make your mind fucked up. Right. And it can create, it can um, create temporary cases of ADHD, ADD, um, other mental illnesses, and it can overall affect your depression. Mm-hmm. It's also been proven that people who are schizophrenic, who have a poor diet, that can fuck with their schizophrenia as well. This is all documented scientific, like it's real, you can Google it. I'm not going to do well with the depressed shit in the emails anymore. I'm okay. going to try really hard to be compassionate because I understand that not everybody knows what I know mm-hmm. now, and I believe this. Um, and if I had somebody trying to tell me this six years ago, I wouldn't have wanted to hear any of that. You can't right. fucking tell me to just feel better. That's not how it works, and it's not. Mm-hmm. You telling me cheer up's not going to make me feel better. No, it's well, about active choices. Right. And it does come down to that. At some point, I have to make a choice to start getting my shit together. Mm-hmm. If, if somebody gets divorced, right, like let's say somebody's wife leaves them, and they go through, she left me. Woe is me, poor me, what am I going to do? I can't live without her, blah, 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 blah. And they stay in their house. They stop going to work. They Their diet goes to shit, and they become very unhealthy, both physically and mentally. What is the likelihood of them finding a new person, starting to live their life again, and like getting out of that depressive mind state? Instead of realizing, hey, I could have been the problem in my marriage. Sometimes things just aren't meant to work, and even though I really love her, this just wasn't for me, Mm -hmm. or it wasn't for her, and I'm the fucking problem, and the only thing that I can do for me is work through my shit so that I can be better next time. So I start exercising because I know that's going to give me a dopamine response and serotonin boost. I'm going to feel better, right? So then once I start feeling a little bit better and I got that energy, I mean, maybe now I need to go see a therapist because I'm not sitting at home feeling bad for myself, and the therapist might be able to help me process the decisions that I've made or mm-hmm. point out where I went wrong or been like, hey, you were really selfish here. You should have been listening to you, to her because she's been telling you for the last seven years that this is the fucking problem. Maybe they're going to give you communication tools, but you have made the decision of not sitting at home, not being a depressive mess to start fixing your fucking life instead of isolating. A year from now, six months from now, you've done the therapy. You're going to meet somebody that thinks you're an amazing person. Mm-hmm. Within a year or two years after that, you may be married again. And it all comes down from that decision of I'm not going to sit at home because I know I feel bad right now. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to change my diet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend an hour on YouTube watching therapy. I'm going to do something that makes me feel good about me Mm -hmm. for a little bit of time so that I can start doing other things. Because if I lay in bed all day, I know that tomorrow I'm going to feel worse than I do right now. Yeah. And that also doesn't go without saying that there are people who have that... um, the world would be better if I wasn't in it mindset or the people who are like, this is just so hard. I don't want to do this anymore because that is a part of people's control alt delete. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And that that's a whole other set of problems. That's a weakness mindset. That's a, a, I want to give up. I don't want to do this anymore. There's that's not what we're talking about with all of this, because I think that the depression and that mindset go hand in hand. And when you're fucking winning, Mm -hmm. you normally don't feel that way. Yeah. You, you may feel stressed out, mm-hmm. but you're not going to have that same mindset. Yeah. Since I was about eight years old, I've had those thoughts. And when I am productive, the depression comes and goes. Right. There are, I would say probably once every two or three months, I will get into a the, the suicidal depression where it is very prevalent on my mind. And that's still a choice. I don't focus on those thoughts. Right. I don't sit there and think about it and spiral, I think is the only way to put that and just run with that thought and focus on it for four days. That's four days where you could have been achieving goals. Right. You could be working towards your dreams. Those thoughts will never go away. They'll always be there. I know for the next 40, 50, 60 years, I'm going to have to deal with those thoughts. So all I can do is learn to cope with them. How much of that do you think is just you're tired of the grind? 
because I, I when I feel like that, because I do feel like that. Oh, yeah. I, no, I it's, really do. It, it's nothing in my life. Like right. there's not a single person causing me to feel this way. Right. See, for me, when I when I get that feeling, it's because I realize how much money comes in and out of our lives mm-hmm. and like how much business stress I have and how much all of the other things that are going on in my life compile and it becomes so overwhelming. And I'm like, dude, it would just, if I didn't exist, this wouldn't be a thing for me. Like none of this would matter. But I also know that if I didn't exist, all the dope shit that I get to do, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get to do, you know what I mean? So like, that's a very prevalent thing for me as well. And I'm sorry that this, this podcast started off kind of dark, Yeah. but it, it is relevant conversation because we get a lot of emails where people who are depressed victims that don't want to work, to get better Mm -hmm. and they're just accepting it which is why we ended episode 23 the first time we tried to record it because i got so pissed off that i had to leave the room yeah and it wasn't at you it was at the fucking email that we Mm -hmm. got but yeah those moments where i'm feeling that depression of i don't want to be here anymore and it's repetitive thoughts it is because life is overwhelming i know that i can't just take a day and do absolutely nothing and there are definitely days where i just i want to lay in bed all day i want to order food and eat food in bed and watch Lifetime movies and cuddle with you and do absolutely nothing. You know, you know that we are going to get to a point in life that we can do those things. Right. Not because we're depressed, but because it's Thursday and that's what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And those moments when I'm feeling that suicidal depression, it's because life is overwhelming. And I know if I were to take one day, I would fall behind a week. You know, if I skip cleaning, that's a three or four hour process and I put it off until tomorrow, that's now four hours on top of the other three hours I have to clean. So I have to reschedule everything and I'm not willing to do that because my depression tells me that I want to lay in bed. Right. But that's where that depression comes from. It's not from a person or any specific triggering event in my life. It's just life is overwhelming at times. And that's the feeling of you've got so much shit to do that you can't just take a break. Mm-hmm. And I know that there's nobody else that can do it for me. Right. Knowing that I have to be the one and get up and do it every single day. You're right. It's the grind of it. It sucks. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that's ever going to just go away. Right. So the, and the acceptance of knowing that this is what I have to do to literally survive. I don't have a choice. Yeah. We actually do have a choice though, Mm -hmm. because we are building ourselves to be able to take that time off and to do those things so that we don't have as much stress as we have. And we are lucky in that we have grinded as much as we have to get to that point. But I really think that within the next four or five months, our life is going to be very different than it is right now. Mm -hmm. And I know that I believe that because today is the ninth. This podcast is for the 30th or the 31st of this month. Let me see. I'm sorry, the 29th. So this podcast is three Mondays away. Oh, wow. So by the time they hear this, three weeks will have been passed. Mm -hmm. And by then, if we continue the record schedule we are on now, our podcast will be recorded into August. Okay. (laughs) Once we're that far ahead, we do whatever the fuck we want. Mm -hmm. Because if we miss a week, it's not going to put us back very far. It took us a very long time to figure out the grind of all of this because we were trying to like hit schedules and hit live streams and, and read books and like stay on top of the learning aspect. And now that we've got it, Right. We were doing all that while trying to maintain our life on top of it. Right. It feels very routine mm-hmm. now. It so. does. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I feel like we're in a really good place. Um, it, it's really weird because you went through this like very deep frustration mm-hmm. with all of this for yeah. about three weeks. And the whole time I'm like, babe, we got this. This isn't that big of a deal. Like we just have to push through. And like, I'm trying to cheerlead and and rally the troops and get us through it. And you got out of it. And I went right into that bitch nose dived. Yeah. And for the last, like maybe month I've been slowly getting bad about not wanting to do any of this because the emails are redundant. We're getting the same shit over and over again. It's not that just, it's not that they're just redundant. It's, I want you to validate my self pitying. I want you to tell me that I'm right and sitting here and wallowing in this and that my boyfriend's wrong because he can't read my mind. Right. So because we kept getting those, I was getting more and more frustrated because I want to help people. Mm -hmm. And if we've already answered three emails like that and somebody sends us another email, I don't want to answer that again. Like we've already had these discussions. The information's there. Mm -hmm. And it always comes from people who are like, we absolutely love your podcast. If you really love the podcast and you weren't just saying that, you would have listened to the shit and you wouldn't be sending an email. Do you know how many people are in our Discord 
that are like, I have never actually sent my email through because you guys answer so many topics that like my shit's getting answered. Yeah. We even receive follow up emails now. So we're about a month and a half to two months out on emails. Yeah. Reading them. So we'll receive an email and then two or three weeks later, there'll be a follow up of never mind. I've been watching the podcast. All of my shit's been answered mm-hmm. and this is how it's changed my life. Yep. I, I fucking love those emails. Mm hmm. Um, I know that I said this on another episode that's not even been released yet. Yeah. So I don't know how the schedule is going to land because we've been recording out of sync. So I'm going to say this now as well. If you guys have had help from us, if you've gotten an email read and you've implemented things and it's changed your life, or if you've listened to the podcast, and you've implemented the shit in your life and it started making a genuine change for the better. I want emails. Mm-hmm. Send us an email. To be better, thank you. This is what you did to change my life. And tell us what you implemented and how that looked in the changes of things. Um, I also want to really start getting to the point where I can interview people. And, and even not, maybe not even necessarily on the email things. Like I, I have it in my head. I want to sit down with Dakota and, and, and talk to him about his snoots on the ground business because he does dog training and makes custom leashes and shit. Mm-hmm. And he owns a jujitsu school. And like I know that him and his woman are very close. Right. I, I want to have a conversation with him so that he can talk to people about what it is to be a small business owner on multiple fronts as a young man. Cause I, I want to say he's maybe 30. Oh wow. And um, what, how that looked for his relationship. Like what were some of the trials and tribulations? Because I know what mine are. Mm-hmm. I've experienced that. I've talked on it already. I won't talk on mine anymore. I'm gonna talk about other people's shit so that I can vibe with that, you know? Yeah. And I think that that would give us a new um, course. And maybe that would be a reactions channel kind of, kind of conversation mm-hmm. because it's not just relationship, it's business. We, we need to change that title of that channel because okay. I don't want it to just be reactions. If we start doing vlogs and shit, like mm-hmm. it needs to be on that channel. And it, maybe we start doing that too. Okay. Maybe for like Patreon, we do like a once a week, we sit down like the, the real world. That's what I just said in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you wanted to do vlogs. Right. I don't want to walk around with a camera and like document our life like that. Right. But I, I could come in here and turn the camera on and have a 15 minute bitch session about everything and then shut it off and go about my life. Okay. So that was definitely your idea. I just don't want to do the vlog thing. Mm. However, there's two of us. So in reality, if we wanted to go on dates and vlog kind of like the cow thing, we can just plan the shit and take the camera and you can hold it and vlog for me. And then mm. I can do the same for you. And it would be like making video content versus vlogging like Casey and I stat. Right. I would be more down for that. I think that could be fun. Absolutely have to buy another camera for that, though. Why? Um, Because even though these are all hybrid cameras that do video and audio, um, they are not, they're not like dedicated high-end video. Mm -hmm. So like these are all, the Sony a7R 4 and 5 is what we're recording on, but I want the S series because that is their video DSLR mirrorless camera. That's not the one you just bought, right? I didn't buy it. I haven't ordered it. Okay. I, I'm I'm so focused on getting our debt paid off that the idea of spending thirty two hundred dollars on a camera literally makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah. So I don't know. You look pretty good over there. Thank you. I do this for you. Do you? Mm-hmm. Can I tell you that I genuinely appreciate that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't take that for granted at all. I'm glad because I know that it'd be very easy to put your hair in a messy bun and wear sweats and a t shirt mm-hmm. and just be you know comfortable all day while we're here. Um, the fact that you take the time to do your hair and put your makeup on and actually make yourself presentable, even if you're not leaving the house makes me, it, I know that you're doing it for me. I know that you're not doing it for yourself. You're, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, it is solely for me to look at. It makes me feel very good. So I'm glad. I bet a lot of dudes feel that way, um, but they don't say it because women say that they're trying to control. Right. Or you should appreciate my natural beauty, which I'm sure he does. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that the gratitude and the aspect of all of that is also not a thing for mm-hmm. a lot of people because we're told that you guys do that for you, not for us. Mm-hmm. I didn't do this for you. I did this for me. Or there's the men who are like, who are you getting dressed up for? That's gross. You dick. You Both know what I mean? Mindsets like, are just yeah, gross. Yeah, they really are. It's weakness. I yeah. see that as a frailty. Do you have anything you want to talk about? I know you said you had some points earlier. I do. So the first thing I want to talk about is... There was a clip, I can't remember where it's posted, but it's from one of the podcasts where I said that I would not be okay with you telling another woman that they're beautiful. And the reason being is when we are having our very intimate moments as a husband and a wife, and you are looking into my eyes and at my soul, 
That is what you tell me. Mm -hmm. If a man can tell something to his wife like that and then go and tell it to a bunch of strange women on the internet or some stranger in Starbucks, that word has no meaning at that point. It definitely devalues it. Right. How can you be a man of your word if your words don't have meaning? Okay. There are things that I say to you as my husband that I would never say to another man. And there are things that you say to me that I would hope you would never say to another woman. Right. Because within our marriage... <laughs> Our marriage actually means something. Right. It's more than a piece of paper. And that thought correlated with if your words have no meaning, no wonder divorce means nothing for people nowadays. Oh, we had a slight argument. Well, I'll just divorce you. I'm bored of you, so I'm going to leave. Do you have any thoughts on what I just said? Um, I, I think that there's a lot in what you just said. I, I think that there are a lot of men out there who, who grew up on Scarface mm -hmm. and like, you know, nineties gangster rap and, you know, word is bond and, and they want to believe that their word means everything that, but they can't keep their word. Mm -hmm. And what you just said about what I say to you, if I'm saying the same thing to other women, my word doesn't have validity to it anymore because it, I'm, there's no honor there. Right. And, and I think that that's the bigger point of what you just said, mm. because if I'm telling you that you're beautiful in our intimate moments and I'm running around saying the same shit to the other women, I'm doing that for attention. I'm doing that to try to garnish something from or garner something from them. It's not about just paying a compliment. Right. If I wanted to pay a woman a compliment, I'm not going to use the same vernacular that I use to you because I view that as wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not an insecurity thing. It's not a her insecurity thing. It's me trying to make sure that my wife has a special part of my life that I don't give to other people. Right. This really isn't... I don't understand why this was even a conversation on those TikTok videos because that video itself has gotten more hate on YouTube and on Facebook. It was so bad on Facebook that I just deleted it. Yeah. Um, Which blows my mind that people view that as insecurity. Right. Like that really does. <clears throat> when you think about that, I just, I, I don't understand how people don't understand that. Right. There are things that I say to you, I would never say to another man out of the sanctity of our marriage. And our marriage truly does mean something to me. People say, oh, I love that. I love you. And I love that tree. Right. Love doesn't have meaning anymore. You can meet somebody and two weeks later, you think you're in love with them. So I'm going to tell them I love you. Right. This downfall of society is insane to me. Do you think that everybody that was saying how insecure we were and we're having all those problems would be okay with their significant other being inappropriate? To the opposite sex because as far as i'm concerned if i'm telling a woman she's beautiful mm. there's intent behind that right that's not something that's not something you say to somebody with no emotion mm -hmm. beautiful itself to me is an emotional word right there's emotion attached to that if i listen to a song or a poem or i i see something like a piece of art and i'm like damn that's fucking beautiful yeah. you know it evokes emotion that I'm going through it emotionally somehow because I'm connected to that on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. So to me, the word beautiful in itself has a lot of meaning to it. Right. Telling someone they look good is not the same thing as saying that's beautiful. Right. Saying I like your dress is not the same thing as saying you're beautiful. Right. I like your dress. You're beautiful. And damn, you got a fat ass mm -hmm. is not the same fucking thing. Most people now are going to be more offended by the fact that some man may say, damn, you got a fat ass to a woman than being in a relationship and calling another woman beautiful because they don't understand vernacular. Right. I also don't want to be the woman known as, oh my gosh, I heard her husband just compliments anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Do He's you commenting on all those Facebook profile photos. Do you see who he follows on Instagram? That's her husband. Do you think that that makes you look bad as a person? What do you mean? Like as, as a wife of a man who does that, do you think... Do you think that that would make you look bad? I think look bad, no. Uh, garner pity, probably. Like, how, how would that make you feel, I guess? Because I, I don't understand. How would that make me feel if I was that wife? Right. Um, it would make me feel insecure. It would make me feel like you have roaming eyes. I'm rep replaceable. My feelings don't matter. That I am not a priority to you. Okay. Hear, hearing it from other women. That kind of thing is where that would go or just me doing the commenting and, and that being a thing. If I was the wife of a husband who was constantly giving other women a 
um, attention. That's how I would feel. Okay. How would you feel about the women who are, I, I don't know how to word this. I don't know why I'm struggling so bad right like now. Like an outside perspective, like my friends in that relationship? No. Um, you said, mm. you, you said that other women will be like, damn, did you see what her husband said to that girl? Or damn, did you see the way her husband compliments other women? Right. If you were that woman and you were hearing the other women say those things, how would that make you feel? Not so much what I'm doing because there's another l layer of that. Like, how would I feel about the women gossiping about it? Yes, yes, because their opinion of me and you and what we have is now on the forefront of your mind, on top of knowing that I'm already doing these things. It would be, it would hurt, it would hurt to know that I'm that woman that gets talked about. It would make me reflect on my life. It would definitely hurt and I'd be like, well, fuck you. Right. You know, but deep down, if, I, if I'm if i bothered by it and other women are starting to notice it, it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. And it would be something that I would definitely address. Be like, it's not just in my mind. I'm not the only one who feels like this is inappropriate. I am now hearing it from other people in public that this is an issue. And this is like, this is a reflection <clears throat> on who I am. You know, I learned something the other day mm. because we did an episode on gaslighting. Mm. You saying that other people in public are saying blah, blah, blah is defined as gaslighting, according to Google. Wow. So you are no longer able to have an intelligent conversation about the way you feel about something without it being without being labeled as a gaslighter or a problematic communicator because people want to throw buzzwords instead of allowing you to express yourself completely off topic. Just wanted to make that point because mm -hmm. we have a hard time with buzzwords. Yeah. Full disclosure. So. Do you have anything else? Because I'm about to go on a tangent. A tangent of what? Uh, everything that you just said. Not currently. Okay. No. Interrupt me at any point mm -hmm. because I know where I'm going with this. Okay. From everything that you just laid down, you have a husband who is looking at other women, calling them beautiful, having eyes for them, as you put it, mm -hmm. making inappropriate comments in person and on the other, and on the internet to the point that other people in our lives are seeing that. Mm hmm you already said that you would start to feel insecure. You would feel like you are an option mm -hmm. instead of my person. And now you've got other people talking. If you were feeling insecure and we had a problem with communicating, where, how long do you think that would go on before that destroyed your intimacy in our relationship? It would be immediate. Okay. It would be immediately my my view towards you would change and the intimacy would shift. How long do you think it would take before we were in a roommate, roommate phase from that? A week or two. Okay. Knowing I really need a table. My mouth is so fucking dry yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm like licking at the back of my tongue <laughs> up against the roof of my mouth. Yeah. I'm dry. Dude's fucking cutting the grass. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So knowing, knowing that that's where we're at, I apologize, guys, if you can hear the lawnmower going back there. I'm not. I'm not going to try to hide that. Um, I have. I'm on almost an acre of land, and I'm not fucking cutting the grass by myself. There's a team of people that do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, knowing that that's how you feel, knowing that that would make the intimacy shift, and it would only take a week or two for that to happen, for us to go from a very intimate, mm -hmm. physically, emotionally, and sexually relationship to problematic no intimacy seeing that happen knowing that my needs are no longer being met because you haven't communicated it yet because mm -hmm. you said you were insecure in the moment this is hypothetical right that is going to make my behavior increase because the intention that i was getting from you before that right was supplementing what i wasn't already getting or vice versa well, right i would that would never happen without a conversation i know that I'm not speaking about us. Okay. This is not a me and you thing. This or a you and I thing. This is a you and I hypothetical situation so that people can understand what they're doing to themselves. Okay. Um, because I don't do any of that. Mm. I don't. I better I, not be. I very rarely even post pictures of myself. Like I'm, I'm not that guy. We know that that's been fucking established. Mm -hmm. Um, so please don't think that that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. If we had, so let me back up. Because I think that I just hit on something and I don't know if I drove the point or not. 
if you and I already have that intimate relationship physically, emotionally, and sexually, mm. and I'm liking other girls' information or um, photos on the internet, I'm calling them beautiful, I'm being flirtatious, I'm getting attention from the internet, I am supplementing what I'm not getting from you from there and trying to fill whatever void I have in me by doing that. So in the event that... I'm going to pause you. Okay. Because you know where you're going, right? Devil's advocate. We do receive emails where women say, I go above and beyond and I'm flirtatious and I touch him and I never tell him no and I've never turned him down and he's still doing this. He's still filling a need. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is something that is unresolved within him? Yes, I do 100%. Um, I think that there's a lack of communication uh, on both of their parts Mm -hmm. because there's a need in him that's not being filled and he could be one of those people that just constantly needs attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can call that needy if you want. I believe that people who are needy are needy because they're not getting enough. If you if you eat and you're hungry five minutes later and then five minutes later and five minutes later, people are going to call you gluttonous. Mm-hmm. They're going to say you have a, a an issue with moderation. They're going to say a whole bunch of other shit, but in reality, you just didn't eat enough to actually satiate yourself so you're continuing to snack. Mm-hmm could be the same thing. There's an emotional void in that man and he's trying to fill it. Whether it's he's no longer attracted to his woman, she's not actually doing what she thinks she's doing. Um, Maybe he has a kink that has not been explored in the house and he's trying to find somebody to fill that. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that could be going on there. Right. But I do believe that is a him problem Mm -hmm. and I believe that that is a communication problem from the both of them. Okay. All right. So knowing that that ties into everything that I just said. Mm -hmm. So you start to feel insecure because you're insecure and we have not been able to work on our communication. You pull away. Like you said, it would be a week to two weeks without, with no intimacy before. Like we completely shifted during that week to two weeks. You have become reserved. I am too caught up in me because I think that's a selfish mindset. I agree that I don't realize that you're going through it, Mm -hmm. but I'm no longer getting that attention. So now I'm going to the internet even more. I'm flirting even more. I'm doing even more. And now people are hearing it and coming to you and be like, damn, I can't believe your old man did that. Like he should be fucking holding you down. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is going on? And now you're getting angry and the intimacy has shifted. And now we are really fucking having problems because of all of this. At what point? It's hard. It it is hard because I I want to be specific with what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave that ability for somebody to come in the comments and say something really fucking stupid right now because we are working through real life relationship problems for a lot of fucking people without an email. So Mm -hmm. nobody's getting called out. I guarantee you that at least 10 people listening to this on the day of the release is going to be like, damn. Oh yeah, they're going to feel attacked. Right. So all of that plays out. And when you look at the root, because that's what we've been, you know, everything comes down to the root with us lately. It's our our current thing Mm because it shifts. The root of all of this came down to me using terms that I use for you to other people, which would then invalidates our intimacy while I try to get attention from other people, which makes you feel insecure. Mm -hmm. You then pull away because the communication is not properly there and we find ourselves in a roommate phase. When you rewind everything that we just said, it falls right back to your point about a man and his word Mm -hmm. and the... Um, the way that you garner attention. Right. So knowing everything that I just put out there, do you still think that it is insecure to set a boundary to not allow your man to have a conversation with another woman and use terms like beautiful, gorgeous, you're, you're sexy? Yeah. Because I've laid it out now. Mm-hmm. There's not a what if scenario. This is exactly how this shit plays out. Where's their actual insecurity there? You are setting a boundary to prevent all of that shit from happening Mm -hmm. simply by saying the word beautiful has meaning to me. Yeah. You use that on me while we are being intimate and I'm not comfortable with you calling another woman that. Yeah. Where's the insecurity? Told you I was going to go on a tangent. People blow my mind. Told you I was going to go on a tangent. Do you have anything else that you want to add to that? No, I know you No, I know you got another point, but. I do. My mouth is like the Sahara. Yeah. <laughs> so. Almost. I would say majority of people have some sort of anxiety, depression, something inhibiting their 
mental functions day to day. Okay. And you have made the analogy of having your table and you invite who you want to, to your table. That's a whole thing. Right. And I was thinking the other day, people who have anxiety and depression and they allow those emotions to take over and inhibit their day to day life. They're inviting them to their table. And when you invite, wait, do you mean you're, they're inviting the anxiety and depression to their table? Correct. Okay. Just trying to make sure that I'm on the same yeah. page. Okay. So let's just stick with the anxiety. People wake up with anxiety. I used to do that. I would wake up and immediately want to throw up for my anxiety. When you wake up with anxiety, the first thing you have to ask yourself is why am I feeling this way? Get to the root of your anxiety. And then you have to ask yourself, is there an immediate action I can take to alter the course of how this is going to play out? Right. If the answer is no, you're going to let the anxiety of a situation that is completely out of your hands dictate your day. You're going to be less productive. You're going to probably be more irritable. You're not going to be fun to be around. You're going to cause external issues. You're going to ooze that anxiety and make people around you uncomfortable. You're going to be more combative. You can make your partner's day a little bit worse because you're just boiling over, overly emotional, not logical, and now they have to deal with cleaning up the mess that you're going through. So you have invited anxiety to your table and anxiety gets drunk. It makes inappropriate jokes, touches people who don't want to be touched, uh, throwing food, chewing with their mouth open, just they're a mess. They're sloppy. Success is not going to want to be around sloppy like that. No. Peace is not going to want to be around sloppy. Happiness, hobbies that you enjoy doing. Love, unconditional love, real connection, good relationships are not going to want to be around sloppy. So when you invite anxiety and allow it to stay at your table, you are driving away all of the good things you want in your life because those good things are not going to be associated with a drunk. Just like at Thanksgiving dinner, you guys all have that one aunt. Oh my God, we know she's already going to show up drunk. Yeah. We're going to have to avoid her. Yeah. Let's all go to the back when she gets here. You have to make the choice to say, anxiety, you are no longer welcome at my table. You can stand at the front door and make a ruckus. I'm going to know you're there. You can pound on that door all you want, but you're not going to come in here and disrupt my dining room table where I want my elite people to be, where I want my success to be. Did that all make sense? Yeah. Was that a lot better than how I said it in the car? It was, okay. but it's still. I still am going to say what I said to you in the car this morning. By the way, we talked about all of this before we did the podcast. Mm. Like we, Not all of it. We talked about those two points and a yeah. little bit about what I had to say, but... Um, I said to you in the car when you brought that up that you're only good as, as good as the company you keep. Mm -hmm. And you can even tie this back into the millionaire statement. If you hang out with six millionaires, you'll be the seventh. Yeah. If you hang around depression, anxiety, and messes, mm -hmm. drunks, that's what your life is going to be. Yeah. This ties all the way back to the beginning of this episode. Everything that happens to you is a choice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen to you. Life happens. Right. Life is going to fucking happen if you were here right now or not. Mm hmm the world is going to continue on with or without you. Life is happening. It's not happening to you. You're just a product of it. Right. So the choices that you make are going to dictate the way your future looks. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of foul shit can happen. Obviously, we're not talking extremes because I have to fucking say that. Um, but the decisions that you've made up until now has gotten you here. Right. Which is why everyone, every time we do a Q&A where we have people field questions, they always go, if you could go back into time and change one thing about your life, what would it be? Nothing. That's fucking right. Not a damn thing because my life is dope right now. I am who I am because of the things that happened yeah. to me. And I've gone through some shit. So have you. Mm -hmm. Horrible, horrible shit. I'm good. Yeah, that stuff used to be very prevalent on my mind and it's not anymore. <laughs> right. I don't Because you've done the work. Yeah, I don't let my past affect my present yep. or my future. <clears throat> I got too much shit going on. I got too many good things coming my way. I cannot let anything set me off course of that. You know that there is a nine-year-old watching you right now say that because this is the exact same thing that we told that nine-year-old in her yeah. email. Shout out to our nine-year-old fan. <laughs> when, when she messaged us in the Discord and she was like, they read your email, she came running in. I was, yeah. I was so excited. Yeah. I'm glad that she got something from that. Yeah. We're, we're changing lives. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I, I know that I have a hard time with the comment section mm -hmm. so much so that I'm really starting to avoid my social media because it's just easier not to read it. Right. People can hate me. Just do it in silence. 
You don't have yeah. to tell me how much you hate me. You don't have to be foul about it. Right. Um, so I am making taking steps to make changes in that aspect. But we get emails and people tell us, mm-hmm. I literally ripped up my divorce papers because of this. I we was set our divorce papers on fire. In the backyard, yeah, after, after our check-in. Like, yep. I had no idea that he did that. And now that, you know, now that, that the check-in happened, he told me he had divorce papers signed up and we burned them. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. The, the changes that we are making is happening. And it may not be for everyone, but those who need to hear it will. And Definitely. that's all that fucking matters to me. So mm-hmm. I've missed this. Me too. It's so hard for us to find things to talk about because we talk a lot. Yeah, we've been recording almost every day for the last three weeks. Yeah. But even beyond that, like when we're sitting on the couch, we're having conversations. I, I can't. I honestly think the last time we sat in silence and didn't have a conversation was during John Wick at the movie theater. Because even when we watched D&D the other night, we were talking during the fucking movie while watching TV on the couch. And we have sermons mm-hmm. on. Uh, we watch Transformation Church on YouTube. We talk about the sermon while it's happening. Yeah. Pause that. Run it back. I got to hear that again. You know what I mean? Like we have we talk to each other. It's almost like we actually enjoy each other. Man, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. You know, and this is really just our life. Mm-hmm. We would have this conversation whether the cameras were on or not because understanding how people work and identifying things that we may not have known about each other helps the relationship. Yep. Yep. And you never know where the outside source of information is going to come from. Mm-hmm. You know, something could trigger thought and I could have a thought and you'd be like, I can't believe you just said that. Oh my God. You're so just... Like you're intelligent, but sometimes you're like up there with Einstein. No, I don't with know the about shit that. You, say <laughs> you flatter me. Your mind's like Wonka's chocolate factory, and I got a golden ticket. Yeah, you're gonna lick my brain. The snozberries taste I like will, snozberry. Yeah. That brain goo slime. Blech. Stick a straw in it. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I have one more thing. If you want to hear, okay, it. let's go for okay. it. Okay. So my last point is we receive a lot of emails Mm. about just unacceptable things happening. Like, yeah, babe, I'll go to the funeral with you. And then day of, no, I'm not going. Right. Oh, man, that was a rough one. And then being super shitty that the wife is attending a funeral of her ex-father-in-law, who was a very important person to her for Mm -hmm. over a decade. She gets home from the funeral, doesn't acknowledge her, texts her from another bedroom did you hug him? Yeah. Come on. We get emails like that where you know that that's not okay. Right. If you had a best friend, a sister, a brother, whomever is close to you in a situation, you know right from wrong. And if you hear it from somebody else's life, you have no skin in the game. There's no emotion there. So you're going to be like, I can't believe you're putting up with that. You know you're better than that. You know you're worth more than that. Why would you let him do that to you? Why would you let her do that to you? When you're in that situation and your emotions are tied up, you just let it go. Right, because love does crazy things to people. So I want you to take a second and think about everything happening in your life right now. And say it's coming from your sister, Amy. Amy's telling you everything that's happening in your life, but it's hers. Why did you actually have to use my sister's name? I actually didn't think about that. (laughs) It just came to my mind. (laughs) <laughs> sorry amy let's go with becky okay I don't, I don't even know becky so let's use becky so everything that's happening in your life right now belongs to some girl named becky becky comes to you and she goes oh my gosh you'll never believe what greg did x y and z and you go oh my gosh that's foul as fuck did you tell him that was wrong what did he say and you're gonna have a back and forth of okay let's problem solve because this can't happen again Or everything in your life is dope and you're like, okay, maybe I am kind of overreacting a little bit. Right. If you, if Becky comes to you and you're like, no, that's not okay. You've answered your own issues in your own life. If you remove yourself from a situation and look at it as an outside perspective of somebody else's relationship, you're going to get all the answers you're seeking. Right. I actually think that's why we get the emails. Yeah. Because we don't have skin in the game and people who, unless for the most part, We Mm -hmm. tell people all the time not to bring your problems to your friends and to your family members because they're going to create a negativity bias. Right. We don't have skin in the game. So Mm -hmm. if we don't like your old man, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Who gives a shit? We don't know you. Yeah, we've never met Reagan. Mm -hmm. Right. So for us to have those those conversations, I think, is an outside... I think that's exactly what you just said. We Mm -hmm. are providing that outside perspective. We get frustrated because some of this is like, are you fucking serious? Like, you're really staying through that? Right. Yeah. Um, That... 
do you have, I'm going to kind of side rail on your topic that that conversation about that funeral got posted today on my TikTok, mm. and um I, it's been up for less than five hours it's got a hundred thousand views on it already are you serious yeah the one i posted about the funeral is at like ten thousand. yeah i just checked it and i was like what do you guys think of this and every man in there was like what a piece of shit what a coward you don't do that you're there for your woman like oh, so i was right to call him a bitch oh yeah hell yeah yeah yep i love when i say something as a woman and men back me up <clears throat> makes me feel like I'm doing right by men. You can tell the quality of somebody's character by the way they, they view a situation, right? When we make a comment about something and we, we, we basically call somebody out for being a victim mm. and playing that mindset and everyone jumps in and you can't victim blame and victim, 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 that's their mindset. And when the other people jump in and are like, exactly, every choice you make is, is you know, blah, 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 your perception is reality, blah, blah, blah. There's two very different people in those in that scenario. You have people who are going to just sit around and just accept everything that happens to them, and you're going to have the other people who are going to be like, "I ain't fucking accepting nothing. I'm going to go get what's mine." Mm-hmm. There are very two very different people in, in the world. You want to know what's crazy? Hmm. I'm praying for both of them. Yeah. Yeah. You just went there, huh? I did. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. I got a lot of hate on one of my videos. Yeah. And this dude was just going at it, misinformation out of his ass, but really just being foul. And I said something back to him and I was like, okay, bro, like you have your thoughts. God bless. And I was like, ew, I used to like, why would you say that to me? (laughs) I used to, I used to be like, fuck you. Don't pray for me. But looking back, they don't care that I felt that way. Right. Because they know that I was a damaged person. So, and you, now, so you're saying you've grown. Yeah. So now I'm at a point where I don't think you're a bad person because you're hateful or spiteful. Or you want to be nasty. I think you're a fuck face <laughs> and you can definitely grow as a person. Yeah. But I have faith that one day you will find your happiness and you're going to recognize that your actions do have consequences. Yeah. And you are saying very foul things to another human being. And I hope that if that's something you're telling yourself, that stops. I meant the foul things you tell the others. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. I know what you meant. Cool. I'm glad you corrected it though. Yeah. You have anything else that you want to talk about before we get into it? Cause I'm pretty sure we just killed an hour. Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. That was nice. <laughs> I, I think you guys are going to like the side piece 12. If that comes out the oh, yeah. Friday after this Monday release for this podcast, um, make sure that you look to see what's scheduled for the 12th. Or for for episode 12, whatever day that is. That's a dating one. There's a lot of good information. It was a very good conversation with us. Somebody in a Discord said that they felt called out by me because they were insecure. And I was like, what did I say that made you realize you're insecure? I genuinely want to know. Right. I, I would. Did they tell you? I don't know. I haven't checked. No. I did just see a YouTube comment left at 2.13 a.m. on the one chip challenge. <laughs> They said, dude, Peaches is so hardcore. She seems so unbothered by you it. You were. Yeah, I was so. <laughs> you can fucking get me started on that. That was hard. That was very. No, I'm, I'm never doing that again. You made me look like such a pussy. <laughs> you were just calm, cool, and collect over there. You were like, yeah, that's kind of spicy. Calmly reaching for your glass of milk, casually drinking. And I'm like, oh, ice cream, <laughs> oh, milk. Oh. I was fucking suffering. I know. I was, I was panicking on the inside. I was like, this is too hot. I can't breathe. My throat feels funny. I want to cry. I want to chug this half gallon of milk. But I knew if I just let a little bit of that slip, external panic everywhere. A camera yeah. might have been flipped over. <laughs> I might have like ran out of the room. It was. It's funny. I knew we were in trouble the moment that chip hit my tongue. You know, normally, <laughs> normally heat takes a minute. You know, you eat something spicy, it takes a minute. You're like, oh yeah, it's got a little bit of heat to it. That chip in my tongue. I'm like, oh fuck. I knew I was in trouble when I had to go. <clears throat> Cause like I was chewing and I inhaled mm. and it went back a little bit and I was like, oh, <gasps> too much. Yep. My tongue was so blue afterwards. Our teeth were blue from that. Okay. First email, masculine, feminine, and communication. Okay. Hi, Chris and Peaches. As most of the emails you receive, I have to say I love your show. I found you on TikTok and have been obsessed ever since. She called it a show. She did call it a show. Do we have a show? I feel I feel like we just reached a new level of what we're doing. Because we've always just referred to it as a podcast. Now it's a show. Is this a show? I, oh it's my a God. show now. We've elevated. We've elevated. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the To Be Better show. I have goosebumps. <laughs> 
Oh my God, we're co-stars. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a chair with my name on the back of it. Yeah. Yes. Like the folding ones? Yes. I'm serious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can, can that be a thing, please? It's funny. I don't know. I planted the seed. Okay. If it's a thing that you want to get me, you will, but I won't be heartbroken if it doesn't happen. I would honestly rather prefer the chocolates. Next to chair, let's do the chocolates. For a future idea. Okay. Yeah, I've changed the way I've approached my relationship, and I'm seeing some really positive changes with that. I want to know how long she's been listening for and how quickly those changes were implemented. Yeah, that kind of stuff actually matters to me too. Like, did you change things on Sunday and you noticed by Tuesday things already improved? Did it take a week or two? Did they catch on to what you're doing? Right. I would like to touch on the changes before I get into my question. Okay. P.S. I've already changed the name. In, cha- oh, fuck. I've already changed the names in this, so you're welcome to read this as is. That makes it easy. That makes it so easy. My boyfriend Andrew and I have been together for almost eight years, met at the gym, and have been inseparable ever since. I love that they met at the gym. Why is that? It means that they're both in the fitness and they care about living healthy. So when people have the gym thing. Mm. When most women go to the gym, they're not comfortable with men around them in the gym because it's like that video that you saw that chick struggling. Yeah. And the dude wouldn't help the bar off of her Mm -hmm. because he didn't want to be the one that was fucking messing with the girl at the gym. You put that right in front of your mouth. Did I? Yeah. I feel like it's not. No, you're good. Okay. You sound perfectly fine. So. Okay. Um, So that's dope that they met in the gym eight years ago because it Mm -hmm. was a different gym culture then. It was. We moved in pretty quickly after eight months of dating, and I became mom to his five-year-old son, Tyler. His birth mother is not in the picture. She chose drugs over her kids. That's disgusting. Yep. If you are a mother who has done that, shame on you. And I say that with my full chest. To be clear, no no mis, mis, const, misconstruction, misconstrued. Can't be misconstrued. If I hurt your feelings, good. Over the years, we've had small disagreements, but nothing ever lasted more than a day or two. I've always felt we had a good relationship. He's always provided for us, never been afraid to work extra hours if he needed to, and helps me when I need it. I've always had a stable and flexible job that allowed me to take over the mom role. I take pride in that role and also make sure he comes home to a clean house with food on the table. Love all that. I love hearing great things like that at the beginning of an email. And then I go, okay, but what's the problem? Right. Because you're emailing us. And it's not a, I'm excited to find out. It's what could it be? Because all of that is so dope. Yep. That being said, I've struggled with doing everything myself in terms of things that a man should do. I.e. taking out the trash, fixing broken things, mowing the lawn, etc. I grew up having to do a lot of things around the house as my mother has an autoimmune disease that didn't allow her to physically do a lot, and my father worked long hours to support us. I took care of the house, but also learned how to fix anything that broke in the house for my dad, learned how to fix my truck and do anything and everything. Honestly, I think my dad thought if I could do everything myself, I wouldn't date and wouldn't need a man. That You shouldn't need. You should want. Right. That matters. Verbiage matters. It does. Okay. He is a carpenter by trade, and I've helped him build houses since I was young, digging footers for concrete, laying block, running electric, setting trusses, everything. Fast forward to my relationship. If something is broken in the house, I tend to say I'll fix it and do it without giving Andrew a chance to fix it. Okay, so that's your problem. Next. No, I'm kidding. That That's the issue, though. You feel like you have taken on all of the man roles because you volunteer yourself for it and don't even give him the opportunity to say, I got it, babe. Let me take care of this for you. You're just, I'll fix it. I got it. You are too much in your masculine. I've always felt that because I knew how to do it and do it right, it was easier if I did it. Andrew would have to YouTube how to do it or research how to fix it before doing it. In hindsight, or rather since finding your podcast, I knew it bothered him that I would fix everything. Mm -hmm. I was taking that manly job away from him. Yep. I even recall a time that he jokingly said that I don't need him after fixing the shower one night. 
In the last few weeks, I've tried to acknowledge when something is broken to give Andrew a chance to fix it. In this time, he has installed a new dishwasher for me, fixed a door that was hard to shut, and most recently fully cleaned and fixed our AC. She gave him room to grow and he did. Yep. Love that. I love that. And I love that she watered it. Yep. Ugh. After all of this, I've made sure to tell him thank you and that I really, really appreciated what he did. I'm learning how to yield and not take over everything. And I think he's enjoying fully stepping into that role of protector and provider. Yeah. You're allowing him to be your teammate. You've removed that mother side. Yeah. You're allowing him to step up and actually do. That means a lot to a man. Mm -hmm. We we don't want to feel like we're being babied. Like we want to feel like the head of the household. Right. And if we're not the head of the household and you make it fucking clear that we're not, we're going to feel a certain way about it. You know, I was watching Murder Mystery 2 yesterday on Netflix. It has Adam Sandler in it. First movie was pretty good. Second movie, like most, was not so good. In that movie, though, um, him and his wife were introduced to somebody. And he said, oh, yeah, she makes all the decisions in our relationship. I'm totally fine with it. I'm happy. That was his comment on their marriage when they were talking about it. And I was like, damn, like that. They put that in there as a joke. And as we know, all jokes have a root. And that root is that man's emasculated to the point that he's joking about it to cope with it with another man. Here's a thought. Yes. Do you think that that's actually written in as a joke? Mm. Or do you think that's feminism leftist nonsense that's being forced into our television to make young men who watch those Adam Sandler movies to laugh go, yeah, it's cool if she makes all the decisions. Let me just fall into that role. Because people emulate what they see. I could not imagine laughing at that. That's a fucking agenda. I promise you that's an agenda. Wow. That's why I don't watch TV anymore. I can't I can't watch it and not see all that shit. I couldn't I can't watch that and imagine that actually being funny. When I hear a man say that, I hear Pussy defeated. No longer a man. Just Wow. Since finding your podcast, yielding to him more and stepping more into my feminine, our relationship has gone to the next level. I get that. That next level feeling. Elaborate. Oh, my God. You can't say some shit like that and then just stop talking. There has been multiple evolutions to our relationship. Just give me one so we don't side rail too far. Okay. One. Me being able to be a submissive housewife. Okay. That's a big one. Yeah, there are a lot of them, but I'm just choosing that one because that was the most prevalent and something that I'm still thankful for every day that I'm able to live the life I am, that I'm privileged enough to be with somebody who is able to maintain a household and have the income on his own. And I'm able to stay home and maintain the home. It's greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Something I never thought my life direction would be something I never really even considered and something that I knew I would never trust a man to do. And you did it. You showed me that I could trust you and that you do have not just your best interest, but my best interest in mind. It's an us thing. This is about us. And it's not just you. That was the dopest level up I've ever had in a relationship ever. Do you remember episode 21? That was the one that was the um, same same episode that had the business email in it. Mm-hmm. We, we shit on a couple of those emails pretty hard. But the first one was... Uh, a woman who grew up with her mom, aunt, and grandma and was taught to hate men mm. and not trust them. And that was like part of her personality. Do you yeah. remember that? You know that you told me at one point that was who you were. Yeah, I was that person. And you went from being that person to being a stay-at-home wife, a yeah. submissive stay-at-home wife. Yeah. <laughs> a biblically submissive stay-at-home wife. Insane. I never thought my life would be here. I thought I would be some pagan witch dancing in a swamp. <laughs> like are you happier now than you were before i yes unequivocally yes not just because of me like take me out of the equation if this was your life and it was with somebody else that this makes you happy yes okay i'm glad i'm glad i prefer it to be you I, i'm sure you do because yeah. I'm, I'm i mean me oh my god <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a midnight snack. Yeah. Right? My favorite thing to look at. I like smelling your neck when we hug. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's funny. 
I like it when you throw your sweaty shirts at me after you're done working out. <laughs> Taking your boots off. All right, come on. Okay. Stop it. Is it too much? You're going to embarrass me in front of my friends. Good. <laughs> I don't think it's embarrassing. I'm going to make them jealous. Yeah. Like, Damn. Are you going to make me fucking blush is what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, okay. we, we established that that happens. Mm. We don't need to continue to do that to me. We're done with it. Yeah. Okay. Continuing. Mm. I praise him more and appreciate every effort he makes. In turn, he makes sure things are good around the house, and I've noticed he looks after me more. For example, I went to run an errand yesterday, and he stopped me because I had a lot of dog hair on my shirt. He literally stopped what he was doing to grab the lint roller, rolled my shirt and pants, and gave me a kiss on the cheek before I left. Oh, I love that. Make her look presentable as she goes out. Why are you looking at me like that? Simple acts of service. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to devil's advocate here. Mm. How is that any different than a woman making the decision to take her man's boots off when he gets home from work? It's not. Yep. So for everybody that went, aw, if you had a problem with the whole take your boots off statement. Mm. Reevaluate. Yep. Your perspective sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another example. I go to the gym early in the mornings before work. And when I got up to go this morning, I was surprised that my pre-workout was already made. He went out of his way last night to make it up for me, so it would be one less thing I would need to do this morning. All that being said, I sincerely appreciate the podcast. You guys are playing such a big role in cultivating better relationships for a lot of people. Now for my question. Andrew and I are not the best at communicating. We avoid conflict like the plague, and with that, we haven't had a lot of tough conversations over the years. They've been dating for eight years. Right. Okay. I don't like that, by the way. What? That they've been dating for eight years. So she added in another PS. She said that we've been dating for eight years, and yes, we have plans on getting married, but okay. neither of us are in a rush to do so. Okay. I, I still have a problem with that, but that's not really an issue. I just... Okay. Eight years is a long time to dedicate to somebody and not take that leap. Right. That's a me thing. To be clear, that's a me thing. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that you have to get married, but I personally believe that you should be dating for longevity. And if you believe that this is your person and you're happy, you should you should do that. Mm -hmm. It's a me thing. 100% of me thing. Okay. Can you read that line about um, non-confrontational or confrontational? Um, how did they word that? So we avoid conflict like the plague. And with that, we haven't had a lot of tough conversations over the years. Okay. I would really like to start doing check-ins with him. But when I bring it up, he is dismissive of it, saying, we have a great relationship. Why would we want to change it? It's not a matter of changing it. It's about making it better. It's about enhancing it. <clears throat> she goes to the gym. Mm -hmm. They met at the gym. So he, okay. he's a gym rat, too. You look good. If you go to the gym for eight years, mm. I would. it's safe to say that you probably got a, a pretty nice little physique going on. If you've been consistent for eight fucking years and your diet's on point. Why didn't you stop going to the gym at, at year four? Mm. Because I'm sure at year four, you looked pretty good then too. Right. You're maintaining that by going to the gym and doing these things. You're getting a little bit of progress every time you go to the gym. Maybe mm -hmm. 1%, maybe a half a percent. If you stop going to the gym for a year, you're, all that work that you put in is gone. So if you're, if you're willing to do all of that, why not apply that to your relationship and go, okay, our relationship is dope as fuck right now, but if we go and get that extra workout in, tighten our diet down, we're going to get better. We're going to have a dope relationship. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a check-in, which is the diet and that metaphor, and we're right. going to be better. Yep. Blows my mind that people are going, why would you want to change those? Well, fuck that. I mm. want. I, there's no such thing as enough for me. No. Well, you, you, ever watch, you remember when we watched Lone Survivor, and the guy that played Bjorn on Vikings was standing there, and they made him recite that thing in front of the entire team. Yes. And he said, uh, anything worth doing is worth overdoing moderations for pussies. I live by that. Yes. <laughs> Minus drinking and drugs. That's not worth doing. Dope. Okay. Yeah. I'm all on board now. Balls to the wall. Let's get it. Yeah. Good goals. In if you're going to do it, do it all the way or don't fucking bother. Mediocrity is fucking gross. And that makes me nauseous. I don't want you in my circle if you're okay with being mediocre. Yeah. Sitting stagnant. Mm. Getting moldy. I'm good on all that. Growth happens. Let's We're go. like gourmet burgers. I'm not going to be eaten with McDonald's french fries. Damn, I like McDonald's french fries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I had a choice, though, I'd rather have checkers french fries. 
So. Or even the Arby's curly fries are okay, but the checker fries is where it's at. Different analogy. Let's just stay away from food because <laughs> we're dieting. Right. <laughs> so all that shit sounds good right now. So I'm my homemade mashed potatoes and there are those like boxed instant mashed okay, potatoes. Okay, I'll take that. I feel like this is just his way of avoiding avoiding another hard conversation. Could be. I agree with that. How are you presenting the check-ins if that's mm. the case? Because if that's his perception of it, it's the way you've delivered it to him for him to view it that way. Maybe. Or it could just be this is a trap. Mm. Maybe. I'm going to rephrase that. It could be, in his mind, a, a lead-in to bigger conflict. Yeah. You know, if your conversations always start off calm and then you become escalated or you become triggered and you start yelling, you don't recognize you're yelling and he's deflecting because he knows that's where it's going to go. I wouldn't want to do it either. Not saying that's what she's doing, but that is something a lot of people do. Yeah. I've asked him check-in questions before, such as how could I be a better girlfriend to you or what can I do to make you happier? But his answer is always, you are amazing as you are. You don't need to change. Although I appreciate the answer, I feel he is just saying that to avoid an uncomfortable conversation. What does that say about your self-esteem mm. and the way that you view yourself? Because if he views you as perfect and everything is good and he's happy, why would he look for a flaw or try to find something in you that is not to his standard? Right. You've said before that men don't hold on to things the way women do. Nope. So, for example, if a woman goes into a check-in harboring all these little things that she noticed throughout the week and she's expecting the same thing from him, men just let shit go. Yeah. If he, if you are asking these questions genuinely and he is just answering you, that's his answer. I will say that there's always something you can do to improve as a partner. Right. Maybe he just needs time to think about that. If you if you pop quizzes ass with a, ch a check in, mm. he may not have time to process to really think about what could be changed in life to improve his life. Excuse me. And if that's the case, it could come down to plan schedule the check in. We're going to have a check in. Here, here you go. Here's a real, real simple idea. If he hasn't watched the video, mm -hmm. make him watch the video. It's on the YouTube channel. Um, just go to our channel to be better search check-ins. It'll pull up. It's yep. part of, I think, episode three and it's a standalone 51 minute mm -hmm. video. Or go to to be better.co, click on downloads and download the PDF for the check-ins because all of the information that's in the check-in is on a PDF format. Print mm -hmm. that shit out and fucking hand it to them. Be like, we're going to do this on Sunday. Today's Wednesday. On Sunday, I'm going to sit in your lap. And we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. You have time to prep. No pop quiz shit. You, yep. you can open book study if you need to. There you go. Don't don't give him an option. Tell him that this is something that means a lot to you. Yeah. It would make you very happy if he, if he just appeased you. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we're going to do that shit because we want to make you happy. And if it's really that big of an inconvenience for him, I would have a discussion as to why that's an inconvenience. Right. Because there's a deeper issue there. Mm -hmm. Do you not trust that, he, that you're not going to get shitty? Like... Is he afraid to talk to you? Because there, there, there'd be a, di a deeper. Underlying problem. Right. That PDF was a good idea for us. I agree. I'd pat myself on the back, but I'm holding a soda and there's a microphone here, so I can't. It also is kind of hard to reach my back. So was that the end of the email? Yeah. Oh, that was it was just continuing on with other things. Yeah. Asking how we would handle the situation, but you just answered it. The check-ins are not supposed to be a bad thing. They're not supposed to be viewed as a, a end-all or a fix-all. It is literally just a tool to get you guys to start communicating. When you have... <clears throat> you ever watch a debate? Yes. When you, when you have a debate, before you go into the debate, you have the rules laid out. You know what the rules of the debate are. What is and what is not able to be discussed. What is and what is off-limits. Off like, you know, going into it, that both sides are, are fighting equally... And you're adhering, adhering to a structure laid out by other people. So when you do the check-in, even if you don't view it as a fight or a debate, you do have the rules laid out ahead of time. You can have those discussions. Mm -hmm. There are times that people have check-ins and have major fucking meltdowns. Yeah. Um, but they, they feel better afterwards. It's resolved. We, mm -hmm. you know, we, know, we know first check-ins are normally two to four hours. Correct. 
we have um, one of our patrons. Their first check-in was nine hours. Nine hours. But they ripped up and set on fire their divorce papers afterwards. Mm -hmm. Nine fucking hours. They had a check-in that lasted longer than a day's work. Could you imagine how good they slept that night? Oh, yeah. Probably really good. The mental exhaustion from all of that and the weight lifted off from having those conversations. I'd have slept like a fucking baby, dude. I couldn't imagine what their next morning was like. Yeah. Waking up, not having to feel any of the shit they woke up with the day before. Yep. How amazing. Mm -hmm. You ready for the next one? Yes. My partner and I would like your guys' two cents. Is this the name of it? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Currently, my... Currently, my girlfriend and I are watching your live stream on YouTube on 3-30-2023. Love the things you do, and it has helped us see how healthy and fantastic our relationship is. So I am 20 years old, and my other half is 25. We met through our past job, with her past relationship being super mentally abusive and all-around toxic. Also, her childhood and past has also been mentally taxing. Whose has it? Right. I don't want to go into detail without her approval. I have had it pretty easy growing up. Not too much has been bad, to be honest. Or you've processed all that bad shit and moved past it. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that you had a bad childhood, but I, I think at this point it's safe to say that we're all pretty fucked up. Yeah. Or I'm just mentally skewed and just view the world that way. Maybe that's my reality because of my life. No, I would say vast majority of people have some sort of super traumatic event in their life yeah. and then derived from that they have a lot of issues definitely so this june we have been together for three years and throughout this time we have flourished in the relationship and our own personal life <clears throat> we have guided and steered each other down the right paths with words of encouragement and confidence but having the other make the choices on their own early in the relationship we have come from financial hardships <clears throat> And have helped each other grow and be young adults and have everything to sh show for it. Hard work pays off. We still go on dates and do a lot of activities together that we both enjoy. That was all commas. There was no periods. So they were excitedly ranting. Did any of that make sense to all you? All of it did. I got it. I was so focused on trying to actually read that. I did not retain any of it. You want to read it again? It'll make you feel better. We currently work at the same dealership. She works in the office as a scheduler, cashier, warranty admin in the works. I am a medium duty technician, big truck mechanic. We would like the two cents from you guys regarding our most recent three conversations, marriage, moving in together and possible children. How long have they been together? Three years? Three years. Okay. And they're not living together. They're not Correct. married and there's no kids. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh, I'm fucking invested. Yeah. Okay, let's run it. That is yeah. fucking solid. Yeah. Like, Yep. Now, of course, we have talked this over hours of casual conversations in the car or hanging out during lunchtime. Good. She eventually wants to do all three things I have listed above, and I personally disagree with everything except the marriage part just too early in my eyes. Okay, I'm confused now. So he disagrees with having kids. And moving in together. But he doesn't disagree with marriage. Right. Okay. I disagree with everything except the marriage part. But I personally do not want children. My sister has had my nephew about a year ago. And my girlfriend adores him. And I'd love to bring her that happiness. But I do not agree due to the fact that we both are not financially stable enough to afford a house yet or have a child. Okay, so pause. So this is not about him not wanting kids. It's about him not wanting kids because he's not financially stable enough to be a good parent. Right. Okay. So all of this doesn't have to happen within the next year. Right. Those can be long-term goals. You guys are in your 20s. If you say in five years you want to buy a house, you'll be in your 30s. Two years after that, you want to have your first child, you'll be 32. You can have an outline. You can have a blueprint of what you want your life to look like. It doesn't have to happen immediately. Right. So I'm thinking... No, he did mean disagree with everything except marriage. So... Why get married but not live together? Right. That doesn't make sense to me. Right. It doesn't make sense to me either. I also see how it has affected my sister over the year and how it has been nothing but stressful. And I don't wish that upon her with the stress that, stress that comes with her job. Yep. Kids are difficult, man. They change your fucking lives. They really do. I love the freedom that comes with no kids, spontaneous trips, random dates, and keeping the hobbies we both love with financial freedom. Mm-hmm. 
Marriage, I personally agree with, but just, but just too early. Why is it too early? And living together. So you know at three years, the, the obsession phase has ended. Mm-hmm. If you guys are still meshing really well and not living together and you're just dating, why not try to, to live together first and see how that works? I got to be honest, you know, you know if, if this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Mm-hmm. You know at three years whether or not they've got a bunch of baggage. You, you know their trauma. You know the ins and, ins and outs of who they are. <clears throat> I got to be honest, if you're not dating to marry, that's a problem. Right. I also, again, that's my personal opinion. I also think that um, you you want to level up in life, get married. That doesn't mean that you're going to stay leveled up because there's a good possibility that if you don't do a prenuptial agreement, you could get fucked in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, prenuptial agreements are literally insurance for right. your for the event of in in the event that things go wrong. You, you don't do it because you're banking on it. You do it just in case. Mm-hmm. So you get your prenuptial agreement, make sure that's taken care of. But if the two of you move in together, um, you will immediately level up financially. Both of you will because you go from a one income house to a two income house. Maybe you can start putting away to buy a house. Maybe you can start looking into possibly having a kid in the future because you now have a savings account. Like, anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was about to just fucking tangent. Okay. My brain's going. I have pointed out multiple instances where uh, people's relationships have been ruined or changed drastically after moving in together. So that happens because the illusion of who they are to you. Uh, dissipates right you see them for who they are you notice their quirks you start to learn their um, character traits how they live when you move in with somebody you're learning a whole new side of them because you're with them 24 7 now yep it's not three or four nights out of the week or the random sleepover and i have voiced my opinion on that that i don't like having those talks because i am an overthinker and do not like extreme changes we have looked at apartments together and we're going to apply, but I chickened out on it. I just can't seem to commit to that jump. So you're not willing to commit to moving in together, but you're willing to commit in marriage. I'm going to say some unpopular shit. Okay. Ladies, don't don't let men waste your time. Mm-mm. Don't don't. If a man is not sure he's willing to commit and like you are like, I want to get married. I want to move in and I want to have kids. And he's like, I don't want to do any of those. He's telling you flat out what he's not willing to do. Right. Do not fucking waste your time hoping that you can change that man because mm-hmm. he's telling you that he's not okay with it. Right. Uh, the idea of dating to be married because you want longevity and you want to have companionship with somebody that you love for the rest of your life, you need to really look at the situation and listen to what the fuck they're telling you because in this scenario, what I hear is he doesn't want her to live there. Right. He doesn't want to have the change of it. He's not willing to commit because he got chicken out over an apartment together. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to have children. This doesn't sound like it's going to ever actually evolve to marriage. Mm-hmm. Hey, did, is there anything in there that indicates that to you, that he's going to I don't to know. Actually, I haven't read it. Okay. Because so far, I, I'm not hearing that. What I'm hearing so far is that there's commi- commitment issues, that he's very content with what he has because he has somebody that's treating him a life, like a wife. He's got the milk and the cow without actually committing to the cow, mm-hmm. so to speak. Didn't mean to call your woman a cow. Probably not. I probably have to cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> so I just can't seem to commit to that jump. That. Oh, fuck. What was I going to say? I'm thinking about a cow now. <laughs> I have to leave that in now. I love cows. Thank you for taking me to see those Highland cows. That was so cool. <laughs> you know that I tried to find somewhere local. Yeah, you did tell me that. And all the Highland cows in Florida that you get to go and interact with are all done like through photography contracts. And you can't just go in and do what we did. mm I liked yeah. what we did. Yeah, me That was too. an adventure. It was. Even though the GPS tried to take us to the wrong spot. I remember what I was going to say. Okay. So now at three years in, he's having issues with committing on just moving in together. Are you going to wait another three years? Are you going to get past of being with a decade with somebody? And you recognize that you are now in your 30s. You are not in a committed relationship like you thought you were. You're not living together with someone who you want to be your husband or to be your wife. How long do you put your dreams aside hoping that the person you're with is going to step up? Right. These conversations are super important to have. They really are. You know, things that all should should be discussed is like, what do you want to do in your retirement? Mm -hmm. Because if if one of you wants to move to a farm and live in the mountains or something, and the other one wants to to travel or 
get a sailboat. Right. Like that, you know, somebody has to compromise. Somebody's losing out on their dream retirement to, to basically submit to the other person's whim. Mm -hmm. These things matter. They do. Um, I will say that I respect that he doesn't want to have a kid until he's financially stable enough to take care of it. Like I have a fucking admiration for that shit. That's what everybody should do. Right. I also respect that he doesn't want to have the stress of having a child. Yeah, me too. I get that. Same Z. And personally, it seems to me that she completely understands and respects my wishes, which I am grateful for. But I don't want to wait too long, and she gets tired of waiting. That's a valid point. That is a very valid point. It could get to that point. Yeah. If you push it off another year or two, she's going to be like, look, like I feel like I'm wasting my time at this point. My reasoning is because I don't want an apartment. We both think it would be a start, but I've both seen that it would be better for a house, more space for all of our activities, and more space if we need some alone time. Instead of being in a small apartment, and remember what I said earlier about helping each other better ourselves with, hand, with helpful hands from each other, we were both able to purchase new Mazdas and build our credit with learning from each other's advice. And I want that to ref reflect when we end up finding a house we both like and are both ready. I really suck at, at typing, so I apologize if this is all over the place. At the end of this, we want to see if you guys have any helpful hints on moving forward or committing to making that step. I really suck at typing, so I apologize if it's all over the place. At the end of this, we want to see if you guys have any helpful hints on moving forward or committing to taking that next step in the relationship. Did they say how old they were? 20 and 25. Okay. Who's older? He or she is? She is. Okay. So I can understand why she's kind of... Right. She's yep. halfway to 30 at this point. Yep. And once you hit your 30s... Things change. You start to go on that decline a little bit. Yep. Hormones start changing. You want to start settling down. If you would like to make a video about this or whatever, I give you the rights. Are there anything to clarify? Thank you for acknowledging. Okay. Um, you really need to sit down and figure out what you want. You're with an older woman. And it sounds like she knows what she wants. So you're kind of slacking a little bit. You have to figure out, am I willing to make myself uncomfortable to be with somebody who I want the rest of my life? And when I say make uncomfortable, I mean commit to moving in together. If your excuse is... Well, we could get an apartment now, but we really want a house so we can have all of our activities in the house. That's an excuse. It could take you three to five years to buy a house. Could. Why miss out on three to five years of having new experiences together, living in a small apartment, working your way to buying that house together? You could always rent a house too. Right. I just view that as an excuse. Mm -hmm. That is something you're placing the blame on as to why we shouldn't move in together. Yeah, I, I think that there needs to be deeper conversations. You guys need to figure out if the kids are a deal, deal breaker. Yes. Because if you don't really want kids and she really fucking does, one of you is going to end up compromising and there's mm -hmm. going to be bitterness there because of it. Um, If she just wants kids because she wants the, you know, to feel that mommy sensation, but she doesn't want to really commit to having children, she can babysit the other kid that was there or whatever. Like, I don't. Right. I, I don't know. I, I think that really what it comes down to is the, the fucking, the plan needs to happen. I also, I'm also not saying that you, I don't think you guys should buy a house together if you haven't lived together yet. I that's agree with that. That's a big fucking commitment. I think that's a bigger commitment than getting married. Right. Like. Well, I don't know about, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I think it goes hand in hand. The, they, they need to move in together before mm -hmm. they buy a house together. Because you can, you can break a lease. Right. And they both live in an apartment. Currently. You, yeah. So if you guys, unless you guys are living in a studio apartment, a one bedroom apartment would be enough to accommodate both of you. Yeah. But he wants to be able to have time to get away from her. He said that like they want space in the, in the, the house to get away from each other if they need to. So it sounds to me like he doesn't want to have somebody up his ass all the time. Hmm. Then look into renting a house instead of an apartment. That's what I would do. Yeah. I, I would rent a two or a three bedroom house for a year mm -hmm. and do that as a trial run. And at the end of the year, if you guys don't mesh and you still want to be together, you just fucking go get your apartments again. Yeah. You you waste a year. I mean, it's better to figure that shit out now than to figure it out fucking 10 years down the road while you guys own a house and have a shit ton of debt and, right. you know, or, you know, a possible kid that mm -hmm. need, that you, you don't want. Yeah, the kid thing definitely needs to be discussed. I want to clarify, these all should have been conversations in the dating phase. Mm -hmm. 
or the courting phase. They're still technically in the dating phase. Yeah, the dating phase is still happening now. I meant the courting phase. Yeah. Or the first few dates of, okay, like we really like each other. We're vibing. We are six months into this. I want to get more serious with you. These are the things that I want in my life. Yep, I agree. I'm not, I, I, in the courting phase, if I was like, I don't want kids and she's like, I do, mm. that's enough for me. Yeah. Cause that's a hard no. Like, I don't want no fucking kids. And if, if that's what she's like, I want three children. Like, you, she's telling you what she wants. You're telling yeah. her, you guys clearly aren't going to agree. Somebody's going to make a sacrifice and there will be bitterness because of it. There will definitely be bitterness. There might even be some resentment as um, time goes mm-hmm. and you start aging and you're recognizing you're missing out on massive family holidays or birthday parties yep. that could be happening or family vacations. Yeah. My only suggestion is you guys really need to sit down and figure out where your life is going. And are you willing to sacrifice the comfort and the anxiety that you're going to have about change to spend the rest of your life with this woman that you, that you claim to love? Yep. Yep. Yeah. You have anything else? Nope. All right. Next email feeling defeated in my relationship. Dun, dun, dun. My boyfriend and I have been together for coming up on five years. We also have a one year old child together. Okay. Boyfriend together for five years and they have a child. Right. You know what I just thought? Hmm. Why would you, you, you're making an 18 year commitment. You, you, when you have a kid, you're making a commitment to that person. Correct. For 18 years. Realistically, yeah. that person can leave and like be a deadbeat on either side of that man hmm. or woman and leave that other person with the kid and all those responsibilities and that whole situation gets super ugly. Mm -hmm. But why would you have a kid with somebody that you're not willing to marry? And if they've been together for five years and they have a one year old, that means they got pregnant in the three year area, Mm -hmm. probably around the end of the three year area. Maybe Um, my math sucks. So if that's wrong, I don't want to hear it in comments. Um, But if that's the case, why would you not get married and solidify that family? Right. I think about that shit mm-hmm. when people send emails and we're like, we have a kid, but we're not married. And and I, again, this is, this is a me thing. Like I'm not, I'm not shitting on people who don't do those things, but it's a genuine question. Like, why yeah. would you not do that? You love someone enough to, to fucking have their child, mm-hmm. but not enough to live with them or marry them. I mean like that. It I don't know. I don't know. I get it. I don't like the state of affairs of marriage as a whole. I agree. Anymore. Me either. Lately, I have felt very defeated and undervalued. We have a traditional relationship. He makes the money and I raise our son and make our house a home on the daily. The issue at hand is that we struggle financially around November to January. He also had a specific trip related to his hobby we had planned but can never, but can no longer afford. Okay. Okay. a couple of questions there. Mm. If you know that you're going to struggle financially in November and December, right? Mm-hmm. Because in order for that to be a thing, there's now a pattern. You know that every November, December finances get tight. If you know that's the case, then you should be taking 10 to 15% of everything that you make from January until September or October even mm-hmm. and putting that money into a bank account so that when November and December hits, you have a, a nest egg. 10 to 15% is not a lot of money. No, it's not. It's ten dollars for every hundred dollars you make. Mm-hmm. So if you make a thousand dollars, you literally put a hundred dollars in the fucking savings account. Yeah. If you can't do that, you're living over your means. Mm-hmm. Okay, I agree with that. Was his specific trip related to his hobby planned in that slow season? That's a question too. Why would you plan your trip in slow season? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, why are you planning a trip anyways? If you don't have a nest egg and you know you're going to be slow in November and December. I take back what I said. I would plan a trip in slow season. With a nest egg. With a nest egg, yes. Only with a nest egg. But I would plan it in slow season because I'm not missing out on work. Right. Yeah, the nest egg is the only way that that would be acceptable for me. Yep. A lot of verping. Huh? A lot of verping. Oh, my phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's a thought. If, if you, if you, so in the tattoo industry, it's feast or famine where we live. Right. You have a really good January to like end of July, early August, and mm-hmm. then it slows way the fuck down and it starts picking back up around Halloween and then it gets busy again at Christmas time and we, it's go time. Yeah. We know this. It's currently May. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to go to Vegas in September, I would buy all that shit right now. 
I'd pay for all the tickets while there's an abundance of money because we're in season. Mm -hmm. And I would pay that card off so that when we went to Vegas, I have a credit card with zero on it so that I can then enjoy whatever we're doing while we're in Vegas on that card. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I, 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 I bought it now that gives me four or five months to, to pay off our, our shit to, to get to there. Right. And then we have that, that that's business. That's what business looks like. You were literally moving money from one account to another mm -hmm. and, and treading water until you can, you know, really thrive in your business. It's better to do business with no debt. If mm -hmm. you can get to that point, that's fucking gangster. That's definitely the way to do it, yeah. So he had me sell my car that I had gotten and paid off myself prior to meeting him to pay for Christmas and the trip. Oh, whoa, whoa. He didn't make you. It was a choice. That was definitely a choice, yeah. unless he held a pew pew to your head. You still have a choice. And said, do this. Still have a choice. Not a good one. Right. Still, still a, choice, a choice, though. Extreme accountability around here. He probably got really shitty with you and guilt tripped you and manipulated you. Yeah. He didn't make you do it though. You gave in, you caved, you did not stand your ground and say, I'm not doing this. Figure out your own fucking trip. You gave in to his demands and sold the car and you showed him that's something he can get away with now. Would you say. Mm, what? I'm going to hold that thought. Okay. Definitely going to hold that thought. What kind of man says, I can't afford my trip. I need you to sell your car so I can go do my thing. I would see a man as less of a man for that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole lot of you are, uh, you are unfit to lead and provide. She said they're in a traditional relationship. Correct. Okay. You're in a traditional relationship with a non-traditional man. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm so hung up on that. That's so gross to me. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Because I have a whole lot of thoughts, too, that I'm holding on okay. to. I don't want to lose them. When it was happening, he was very sorry and constantly said he would get me a car or equal value by April. When it was happening, he was very sorry and constantly said that he would get me a car or equal value by April. What is this trip? Real question is, is if, if he was able to have the money by April to buy her a new car of same value mm -hmm. or more, right? why did he not just save up the money for the trip mm -hmm. the year of the vacation and put it in a savings account like I originally said? Yeah. This is actions speak louder than words. If there's not a, a nest egg and mm -hmm. there's no cushion there, don't tell me you're going to buy me a car because you can't. He's not sorry. He was just saying that to get you to do it. Right. He wanted to go on that trip. Right. Here we are, April, with nothing saved to get my car and no actual plan. If he has said anything, it is, well, maybe I can get you a cheap $1,000 car. You don't really need a vehicle anyway. What do you do anyway? So now you're a captive. You have given up your... Independence. Your freedom. Mm -hmm. That's how I view... Okay, that's how I view cars. Yeah. Do you remember what it felt like to get your driver's license? Yes. I could do... Anything you fucking yeah. wanted, as long as you had a vehicle to drive. I could go where I wanted. I was paying for my own gas. Yep. Yep. My The first car I ever bought was a 1984 Thunderbird. Mm -hmm. It was poop brown. We called it the Thunder Chicken. <laughs> it was it was ugly. Like, yeah. ugly, ugly. It looked like somebody took a shit on the road. Wow. It leaked a quarter oil every time I drove it. Mm -hmm. I paid $300 for that car. I drove it for two years. Beat the fucking brakes off that car. Yeah. But the freedom that I had with that vehicle, I could go wherever I wanted. Mm -hmm. I, I Obviously, there was a whole lot of risk that I was going to get stranded because I bought a beater. Yeah. But I drove the shit out of that car. The freedom that comes from having a vehicle is something that I, I could not live without. The idea of not having a car, just now thinking about not having a car almost made me have a panic attack. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I The idea of being stuck, I, that's why I drive everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere, ever. Without my vehicle, because right. if I want to leave, I have the freedom to do so. Mm -hmm. You giving up your car, you are giving up your freedom for that man to go have a vacation. Yeah. And now you're stuck at this house waiting on him because he's the sole income. Right. To buy you a car. And it's not a priority to him. He doesn't Wild. care. Wild. And he said, what do you need a car for? What do you do anyway? How about I take care of your kid? Our, I, maintain, our, I take care of our kid. I maintain our household. Yeah. I make sure you come home every day to a clean house. What happens if there's an emergency? Yeah, you have to get the kid to the hospital. What, what happens if he has an emergency at work and he's got the only vehicle and he has, I don't know, slips a disc in his back or something, mm -hmm. something bad, right? And he's in the hospital 
and and he calls and he's like, I, I need this, 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 and this. And their bank account's fucking empty because he's broke and he doesn't have an nest egg and he's got the car and she's stuck at home. Unacceptable. Th- this is this is how my brain works. Yeah. This is this is a fucking problem for me. He's failing as a husband yeah. right now. Yeah, there's a whole lot of fucking problems there. He's definitely Ooh. failing as a husband. Ladies, if your man has something planned, if your husband has something planned, if I was in this situation and you were like, babe, we've planned this. The money's not there. I'm going to go sell your car. No, the fuck you're not. Yeah. We can, we have a whole lot of shit in this house that we can sell. We can sell the TVs. We can sell your computer. Whatever we need to sell that is not my transportation out of here. We can make it work. How about you just don't go? Yeah. How are you going to enjoy your trip? Even if you sell all of our shit, we then have to spend the money again to buy that shit back, mm. knowing that you are not financially capable or responsible with your money. You are not a steward of your money. I, I, don't, know. I don't like this. I don't like this. making me feel, making me uncomfortable. It's making my skin crawl. Yeah. This is not okay. Nope, it's not. This is really not. As a wife, especially a traditional stay-at-home wife, it is not my job to make sure that you have our money right. No, it's fucking not. It's mine. Right. So as she said, in a traditional relationship, as a traditional wife, you do not sell your car to have him go mm-hmm. on whatever vacation that he has planned because he fucked up his money. Don't ever do that. Then you would be stuck in a situation where you can't leave the house anymore. You're going to be so isolated and secluded. The depression is going to get worse. And if you're with a man like this, what do you need a car for? He doesn't care. Can't, no self-care, no Starbucks, no Hobby Lobby, no Target. No drive around just to be out of the house. Yep, can't take your kid to, to a fucking playground during the day. Dude, what the fuck? Doctor appointments. Don't like this. Let's, I don't like let, this. Let's go so that I don't okay. dwell on this because it's going to piss me off. My point in saying all of that was I want to drive it home that women, you do have power. Yeah. She said in the beginning, he made me. So he didn't make you do anything. You made that choice to sell your car to appease him, to get him to shut up about his vacation. Right. Or to try to make him happy. I, I don't know, he's a fucking weenie to me. I bet you, I'm willing to bet you that he was having a fucking meltdown mm. and, and like guilted her into, dude, ah, oh, what the fuck, man? If that was the situation, if he was guilting her and throwing a fit and having a panic attack or whatever was happening, I would have taken the child. I would have packed our shit for the next week and I would have gone to my mom's house my sister's house and to clarify that would have been a 500 mile drive and I would have made that damn drive. Mm -hmm. You can have your little panic attack and meltdown because you misbudgeted for your vacation and I'm going to go somewhere else because I am not going to take the brunt of you not being able to maintain your household as a traditional man. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. Do I want to make an eight hour drive? No, it would. That would suck. It would. It would really fucking suck. It would suck to be in that situation. But in saying it, mm-hmm. it is literally that easy. Yeah. You gonna act like that? Cool. I'll be back in a week. Yeah. Call mom, be like, hey, I need I need like 150 bucks in gas. Can mm-hmm. you cash app that shit to me so I can transfer it to the bank account and I can go get gas and Apple Pay as I'm fucking driving up there because I'm gonna come see you for a week. Yeah. Bringing the kid. You'll mm-hmm. see grandma. Yeah. Oh man. Any money brought in has gone towards his hobby still. This is putting our relationship in a very bad state, and he always makes me feel like I am impatient, selfish, or foolish for being upset and feeling undervalued. Your relationship is already in a bad state. This is not a traditional relationship. No, he's using you. You are are a babysitter and a sex object when he wants to get laid. To the person who wrote this email, you are not in a traditional relationship. Mm -mm. You are in a relationship where you are being undermined, underappreciated, He doesn't care. He does not care about how you feel. You labeling this as a traditional relationship is part of the problem. I agree with that. If you're going around and telling people, I have a traditional relationship and this is how my husband treats me, Mm -hmm. this is why we get so much hate. Yep. This is is the same shit where people are like, stay-at-home moms, you need to have an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. You need to have your own bank account. You need to have your own money. You need to have your plans because of things like this. This is not traditional. No, this is not this is unhealthy. This is a power struggle. Yeah. He, he's definitely holding the power over her. This is toxic. I would say he is almost, uh, I would say that he's financially abusing her. Yeah. 
He's definitely controlled the situation. Yeah. He's manipulated that to take all of the power from her. Definitely. It is taking a toll on my feelings towards him emotionally and sexually. How do I get our relationship back to the good it was before December? I'm trying my hardest to respect him like I used to and not throw anything about our financial issues in his face, but I am angry inside and hurt inside. Respect is earned. Respect is earned. This would have to be a conversation of sitting down and saying, I sold my car to appease you as my husband. Ooh, what the fuck? What happened? I don't know. I just had a really sharp pain in my neck. The only way I can describe it is it felt like a muscle just went off track. Maybe it spasmed. Maybe your tendon moved. That was weird. Jesus Christ. So this would have to be a conversation of, I sold my car to appease you as my husband. No, it's not a husband. They're not married. Oh my God. It's her fucking boyfriends. Mm -hmm. Because remember in the beginning of this, I was like, why would you have a child with somebody you're not willing to marry? And now I want it, dude... You know the type of person somebody is within the first year or two of you dating. Oh, yeah. So this has been a consistent... I, I can guarantee things were not as good as you thought they were in December. Mm -hmm. This is just another added on top of... Right. This would have to be a conversation of, I've been acting like a wife the whole time we've been together. I sold my car to help you get to where you needed to go. And now you are spending money on whatever you want to buy. And I still don't have a car like you promised me. This is a deal breaker for me. You need to start prioritizing me as not only your girlfriend, but as the mother of your child. I would want a car within the next six months. Fuck that. Six months? Mm. All right. So what? Two months. Yeah, I think have a down payment I, for a car. I think that's a little more realistic. I, I got to be honest. I Yeah. Two months max. Mm. That's fucking pushing it. Yeah. And to say a thousand dollar car, like, nah, motherfucker, we're selling shit in this house. Mm -hmm. TVs are going, your gaming system's going, fucking computers going. I'm selling everything in this motherfucker. Start to get selling me a your car. hobby shit. Yeah, absolutely. You got what, like electric tools or something? Yeah. yeah. What are you, a carpenter? Yeah, tools. You can't can't fuck with the tools if that's his job because he needs those tools to make the money. Right. If he's doing wood wood shop but as a hobby. All that extra hobby shit, yeah, that's gone. Mm. Yep. You want me to stay. You've you've proven to me. That you are not a man of your word. Mm -hmm. Remember what we were talking about earlier? Yeah. You've shown me. You are not a man of your word. I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. Without that, everything else that, that falls into our relationship is gone. Yeah. Your word is everything to me. You've proven me that you're not a man of that. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I all that hobby shit. Yeah. No. I would also say you are continuously putting me down and speaking to me like I'm a child. Mm -hmm. That I am selfish for wanting to have my own car again. When the one I had, I paid off before I fucking met you. I would have never sold that car. Mm -mm, me either. I would have never put myself in this position. You are now literally relying on somebody else who is not even your husband to follow through on his word to replace you with a vehicle to give you your freedom back. I would never put that much power in another person's hands. Yeah, that man stripped her of her power. Yeah. Her freedom's gone. She can't it leave. Is. You know how hard it's going to be for her to go? She can't even leave and sleep in her car. Mm-mm. Because that's a last ditch effort. You, if you have your vehicle and you're, it's yours, and in her case, she fucking owned it outright. Yeah. If she left, she had her fucking car. Yeah. Now she would have a car with maybe a car payment. Yeah. That she can't pay. If she had a car payment. Yeah. Because there, there may not even be a car involved. He may be like, tough shit. I can't do it. You know our finances. Get fucked. I, I don't like this. There's a whole lot of manipulation and control there. And then he makes her look like she's the problem. This is disgusting. And then she says, how can I respect him again? Respect is earned. That That's not something you just fucking willingly give people. You do that because you know the quality of their character. Mm -hmm. When somebody breaks their word to you, they're showing you the quality of their character. They're a fucking liar. You can't trust the things that they're saying. Like, I wonder if he's broken his word previous to this. Maybe. I would probably. I would assume so. When someone shows you who they are, as I've said several times now, fucking believe them. Yeah. If he has broken his word several times before this on multiple big deal things, why would you believe him when he says, I'll buy you another car? What does that say about him as a, a, a father? To have a woman and a child in a house with no vehicle, mm -hmm. no nest egg, and is too busy spending money on his hobbies and taking trips and making sure that his family is provided for. I don't. Mm. I wonder how old they are. 
This situation makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. This would be, this needs to be resolved in two months or we have to make arrangements to separate. Yeah. I got, I got to be honest. You're being a lot more graceful than I am because I would be making my exit, exit strategy. I would have a, Oh yeah. I would already be planning something. I'd be making phone calls and saying, Hey, this is the situation. Yeah. I might have to come and live with you for a little bit. Yeah. But I wouldn't tell him that. I wouldn't tell him that I've already made the phone calls. I wouldn't have either. I, I would be like, you have one month to get me a car. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you got to sell every little bit of your hobby shit or every piece of furniture in this fucking house. Mm -hmm. I want a car in one month. And if in one month doesn't happen, I'm leaving. I'm yeah. taking the fucking kid and I'm going. I, I There is a lot of control there. And her giving up her freedom puts her in a dangerous fucking position it as really far as does. I'm concerned. And it, this, this situation is 100% avoidable by saying, I am not doing that for yeah. you. Yeah. And if this is going to be something that you want to harp on and make me feel bad about, I'm going to get in my car and leave. Yeah. Yeah. Decisions were made. Well, if you leave, I'm going to leave you. Okay. Bye. I'll just go ahead and pack my shit now. Yeah. I'll give you a forwarding address. You're already showing me that your hobby means more to me, more to you than I do, more to me than your child does. Am I, am I wrong in saying that? No. Okay. What if there is a doctor's appointment that she has to get to? Right. And he's at work and it's two o'clock. Or he has to miss work to take the child to the doctor's appointment but because they don't have a nest egg and he's not making enough money for them to live comfortably. They're now asked out on rent or that extra day's worth of income is the difference between having like normal food or eating ramen. What happens if there's a doctor's appointment or a sickness? What happens if he gets sick and misses an entire week's worth of work because he doesn't feel well? How does that look for your family with no nest egg? He's spending his money on hobby shit and not actually putting it where it needs to go. Dude, I, I don't get it. I, I really don't fucking get how people live like that. I don't know either. I don't really have another answer for that. Yeah. I, that that I, has to be a conversation, a very stern conversation of you standing your ground saying this is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're a traditional man, you are failing as one right now. I need a car in a month or there's going to be a discussion. There's going to be a follow up conversation of how we we're going to separate. Yeah. And I would have that backup plan in motion already saying, hey, this is a possibility. Yeah, I would. I would, too. I would too. Do you want to do another email? Uh, sure. We'll do one more. All right. 20 year marriage question. Hello. I feel silly sending an email into a show. That's the second show we've gotten. Yep, I'm oh telling you, goodness. we're a show now. This is the first time I've done something like this. I align with your opinions on marriage and family and need an end. Oh, fuck. I align with your opinions on marriage and family and need an objective opinion. So okay. I thought I would shoot my shot and see if this reaches you for a comment. A closed mouth doesn't get fed, right? Facts. Big facts. My husband and I have been together for 20 years, married for 10. We have four children, 22, 18, 15, and nine. Okay. So two in the house would be my assumption there. As you can imagine, there have been ups and downs over two decades that we've been together. Yep. Over the past year, we've been in therapy to improve our ability to communicate with one another and to navigate how to manage conflict. It has helped in those areas. However, during this process, there have been things that have made me question if I want to remain in this marriage. Ooh. Holy shit. Okay. That made me nauseous. I couldn't imagine being in a marriage for 20 years, going to therapy, wanting to improve things, and then learning things that make me question on whether or not this is what I want anymore. I'm willing to bet that before therapy happened, that was already the question. Yeah. You think therapy just confirmed it? I think that people go to therapy because there's problems going on and it's, that's normally their last ditch effort. They know something's not fucking right and they're mm. trying to solve it and they're trying to get an outside source. Therapy, yeah. people don't go to therapy, just go to therapy. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's just not a thing, especially with the cost of it. If therapy was free, yeah. if it was readily available to fucking everyone for free, mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet more people would take advantage of therapy. Yeah. But because it's not, and it's expensive, mm -hmm. and it's time consuming, people don't don't fuck with it. Yeah. It's a, you know, it, you, are, you are having to make your mental health a priority. You're cutting things out of your life to be able to afford that for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. For the entire marriage, I have been the main breadwinner working my way from an entry-level position in the corporate world to a multiple six-figure earning career. I have been a hard worker my entire life, providing an amazing life for my family, 
has always been a top priority for me. Providing has been a priority for my husband as well, but he hasn't been able to manifest the same level of success that I have. Even though he doesn't say it, I know this has bothered him. I have been humble, but I wish he would express pride rather than disdain. I mean, I would want that too. In addition to managing a demanding career, I have also assumed the traditional role of mother and managed the children's needs and taken care of the house. Probably taking on more responsibilities than I should have and Probably. have been working on communicating honestly and openly what I need rather than taking it all on. I'm glad that both of those things were acknowledged. Right. Same. That you have taken on more than you can handle, which is something a lot of women avoid taking accountability on. Right. And then saying that you are becoming more open to communicating honestly about what you need rather than just assuming all of it and being spiteful. Mm hmm. And it, oh, I just read that. In January, we had a really impactful argument about my need to feel appreciated. I hate that all of those words were formulated in that sentence. We had a really impactful argument. So impactful means it left an impression. And an argument is an argument. That means that there were two sides that were trying to be defended. And that impactful argument was about the wife's need to feel appreciated. Right. At the time, he didn't believe he needed to express his appreciation that I should just know it. In that moment, I felt hurt, devalued, and angry. You want to talk about a weakness? When somebody tells you, I wish you just appreciated me more, I can understand the need to defend yourself to like let you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I really do appreciate you. I'm sorry that you feel that way. And then start listing off ways that you appreciate them to validate them in the moment. Or give examples of expressing of appreciation. How, right, or even how you express it. Yeah. But to argue that... And to say something like, you should fucking know better. Or why why not just simply go, I, I will try to make a, more of an effort to thank you for things. Or to let you know that all of the, the work that you're doing as a mom or... I didn't know I was making you feel this way. Right. Like, why, why in the fuck do you want to argue over something that you can literally remedy with words? Is it literally that hard? Literally just words. Is it that hard? It's not like you're asking me to go dig ditches. And it's words to show gratitude to your woman. Right. Something you should want to do anyway. I don't get that shit. I really don't get that shit. That gratitude shit goes a long way. We talk about it in, in the podcast all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it's really not hard to just go, hey, thanks. I really appreciate you making the bed. I fucking love that you make dinner every night. Thanks for going to the store for me. Like, thanks. You just, thank you. Yeah. What What the fuck happened? This is this is why, why, why parents need to fucking do a better job with their kids. Mm -hmm. You teach basic manners and people will never feel that way. Yeah. Even if it's a habitual, a mm -hmm. habitual thank you will make you not feel that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I also realize that I can't remain committed to a relationship where my partner doesn't see my value. I fucking feel that. Yeah. That is a very hard thing to realize. It is also a very validating thing to realize. Yeah, there's power in that statement. There is. This speaks on a whole lot of self-worth. Like, damn. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. I respect that shit. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't make any money for the family, I have value and worth. But you are making money for the family more than he is. Right. And you're doing the mom thing. Since then, I have been seriously considering divorce and I have discussed this with him. Our initial conversation about divorce, he has stated he wants to change, be more appreciative and emotionally engaged with the family. He has been true to his word, and for the past two months, I have seen him working hard on his business, being more engaged with his kids, and really putting effort into our relationship. Okay, so he's trying. Mm -hmm. I've been feeling incredibly guilty that I don't feel any different than I did when we had the first conversation about divorce. Even seeing these changes, I don't know that this marriage is right for me anymore. That negativity bias is there. It really is. I would give it six months. Yeah, I would too. You know, the first two months you could be feeling it's taking me telling you I want to leave for you to change. All of a sudden you're changing. Right. You have to get out of that. I'm not saying you have to get out of that. I'm going to rephrase that. that. That was not the way to phrase that. You have to get past the negativity bias to actually appreciate the changes and then decide. Right. If this is something that is still 
just something you can't get over. Right. Your attitude towards the situation is going to dictate your perception of it. So Correct. look at it as a positive. Give it six months. Be grateful. Mm-hmm. Be grateful to him for being grateful to you. Like, right. Work on that engaging of intimacy. I, I guarantee you that if you just decide to bounce, you're going to regret it. Mm-hmm. You're going to look back and be like, damn, did I, did I really give him a fair shot? Like right. 20 years is a long fucking time to just walk away from it. You're going to therapy. You obviously wanted it to work. Mm-hmm. Give it six months. Don't just fucking call it. Right. View it with a positive attitude. See if it changes the way you perceive the situation. Make sure he stays on top of it. Mm-hmm. I, I would be uh, wary of walking away that that easily. I agree. Or early. Early, I guess, is probably better. And I bet she's still thinking about, well, you should just know I appreciate you. And all the hurtful things mm-hmm. that he said in those moments, even though now he's actively working on it. I bet you're still playing those words in your mind every day. Yeah, I agree with that too. A part of me doesn't know if these changes are genuine or just a last ditch effort to keep me in the relationship. I am concerned that he will go back to old patterns of behavior. If it is a last ditch effort to keep you in the relationship and he's making the changes, shouldn't that be enough? It really should be. Even if he doesn't want to change, he's doing it. Mm -hmm. As long as he continues that, the why doesn't fucking matter the change is happening he's doing it for you right actions Mm -hmm. show me i think if the changes weren't genuine they would have ended after two weeks yeah i agree i agree or there'd have been another conflict yeah yep do i owe him the opportunity to change you owe it to yourself yeah i would say you owe it to yourself or how long should i wait to see the changes before i fully dive in emotionally again you should dive in emotionally, period. I was about to say, you should already be emotionally invested in the changes right. he's doing. If he sees that what he is doing is working and you are genuinely excited about the change, he is more apt to continue to change. Yep. If he sees that he's doing all of this and you're still... Fuck you. Why I don't know bother? if I want this, then that's, why am I doing this? Right. That's, and that's exactly what will happen. Yeah. My efforts are for not. Why continue? Right. After 20 years, he said he feels like we would be throwing everything away. While we have this history, I am feeling like that doesn't matter. I, I sh- um, hold on. Mm-hmm. I actually agree with that statement on her end. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to close the book right. and pick up a new one. I fucking get that. I also think that you are married and you have 20 years mm-hmm. and you need to be fucking sure before you close that book. Once you close it, you can't open it right, again. Right, right. And you you are doing yourself a disservice by not being emotionally invested in his change. If you leave, it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. It's not going to hurt more or less if you get invested right now. Right. I, I don't know. I really, I feel like she's fucking mm-hmm. up by not, not riding that roller coaster with him until the decision's made. I agree. I struggle between wanting to not be his wife anymore and the commitment I made when we got married and had children. I have given so much to this relationship and just feel empty. This got really long. Thank you for sharing so much of yourselves with the world. Your message is helping people, myself included. One day, I hope to have a relationship similar to yours. That's a choice. That is a choice. This, so, this, this is a choice. You could have that relationship now with the man that you are already married to, who you have 20 years with, who you've built a family with. Why put all of this work into who you are and hoping to find another relationship where you can have this? I'm going to be honest. The dating world is not is not it right now. Mm -mm. The likelihood of you finding what you are striving to have is very slim. So why not take the chances with the marriage you already have with somebody who is actively working on changing things to make you happy? That's the place to start. Yeah. And and you have work to do. Yeah. It's not just on him. So if you have work to do and he's doing the work on him, do the work on you now, because in the event that you do leave, you would, it would be better to have that leg up Mm. and be better than you were before you, you know, uh, better than you are currently. I am. I don't envy this situation and I don't envy the situation because it's very familiar. I don't know how long you have been in this, the mind state that you are in, but you know, mm. if you're done, Yeah, you do. 
being in that done situation and trying to get somebody to change and trying to get them to show you and like, it's very hard to go, but yeah, I'm, I really am just done. You know what I mean? Like you are in limbo right now. I truly believe that you need to give it the six months, invest everything emotionally that you can into this man and see if it's worth saving before just leaving. If he's making the changes and he knows you're on the way out the door, he's trying to save the marriage. He doesn't want to throw away the 20 years. He's trying to be a better man. He knows he fucked up. Is it too little too late? It could be. For you, it very well could be. And that's something that he's going to have to accept. Right. If it's too little too late for you, he's had... 20 years. 20 years to yeah. make things right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes waiting until the last minute is not good enough. Right. But if you've got 20 years, what's six more months? Right. I would still definitely wait the six months. But at the end of that six months, if you're still not feeling it, he's going to have to understand, like, you waited too long. You waited too long. You put me as a non-priority for far too long. It's just the damage is done. I acknowledge the trying. Like, we both put an effort. Too little, too late. Yeah, I don't know. I believe that people can fall back in love. I agree. It's a choice. Being in love is a choice. Yeah. It's also being willing to look past all of the things that have happened. Mm. Well, it's history. You're going to have that. Right. You're going to have that with, any, with anyone. Right. And, and and you know this person. You know the ins and outs of them. You know their flaws. They know yours. They know how to push your buttons, which mm -hmm. is why the, the, the fights are so impactful. Why would you want to give that up just to try to start over with somebody and have to rebuild a whole new history? Mm. Like, do, do fucking try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you'll know I gave it everything. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it just didn't work. At that point, you know, like I fucking tried. And that's okay. Only after you've tried. Right. Yeah. This was a very draining podcast. It was it was good. It was good for yeah. me up until the, the last one. Yeah, that last one was kind of really getting under me. Yeah. The car one. That's the one you're talking about. The car one where she sold the car. Or he sold the car with the hobbies. That's the one that drained me. I was good no, up until that. That didn't drain me. The one after that that we removed mm -hmm. got you. Yeah, that one got me too. But that's only because I don't, I can't keep up with this yeah. shit. So, yep, not everything is for the pod. I feel good about it though. I feel like we had a, a pretty good episode. I, I have no we idea where we're at. We're probably close to three hours. Yeah. Do you know what time we sat down? Mm, so Noonish. Down, yeah. See, that's the downside of having all this shit over there because it's all the way the fuck over there. <laughs> Before we end it, I'm going to do a couple plugs. Okay. Um, we mentioned Patreon. Um, we have talked about the Discord quite a bit. If you guys are not a part of that community yet, you're really missing out. If you want to support what we're doing, the best way to do that is to share the content and not just post it to social media. Actually send it to somebody who you think will benefit from our message. Um, <clears throat> the Patreon and the YouTube Super Chats go a long way in helping to um, financially support what we are doing because all of this equipment costs money and so does our time. So those are, are definitely appreciated. Um, if you are going to do one, I highly recommend that you do the Patreon over the YouTube because Patreon actually has a community built around it in terms of Discord. Mm -hmm. We have 630 people in there at this point. And um, we got, there's a lot going on in there. Discord's very, very busy all the time. Nonstop. Yeah, multiple chats, photography conversations, workout conversations, book clubs, like fucking uh, homesteading, homeschooling, step parenting. If there's a topic in there, it's, we've discussed it. And we're active in that community. So um, we are. I'm actually typing in there right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, I just want to say that we really appreciate everybody supporting us. And, and, and I understand that from time to time, these emails get a little wearing and we get a little short because that happens from time to time. But mm -hmm. it's, it's because of the content. You know, when you guys, I know that for you guys, the emails coming in is just the email that you've sent, but we literally get 100 to 300 emails a day. I think that's a fair assessment. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, and we, we scan through those emails. And then when we sit down to read these emails, we become emotionally invested in the conversation and it is fucking exhausting. So just bear with us when we have those those um, slightly hostile emails that come through. We are working on cherry picking. I actually think that we need to get somebody else to go through the emails yeah. to aid Jennifer so that we have a second screener to kind of filter through her filter, um, which may benefit us. Um, also 
for you guys who uh, found us on YouTube, we are on TikTok, uh, To Be Better Podcast and To Be Better Peaches. Yes. And then um, we are also on Instagram, To Be Better Podcast, as well as our photography on Instagram, which is Sinful Images. So uh, I think that's everything. If you guys have actually listened to this point, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell because we will be doing lives, hopefully starting as soon as next week. Um, and I want to get to the point where we're taking live calls. So... Okay. You I, mean like random lives next week? Uh, n- yes, random lives next week. Okay. Not the live calls, but like maybe do like instead of doing a recording for Wednesday's side piece, maybe do a live for the the Splitting the Difference book. Okay. Just because, you know, we're going to be recording anyways. The idea of taking calls, like we have people that we have been in contact with a lot. Um, people that we've actually named on the podcast, Sir Badass Tover and, and mm. the, the Monster Slayer. We have mm-hmm. a Monster Slayer update that we need to read that it was just so fucking far behind oh, right gosh, now. Oh gosh, there's so much going on. One of those emails were sent in March and we're just getting to it. Oh wow. So that was sent March 30th. We read it on May 9th and it won't go live until the 29th. Hmm. That's how far behind everything is right now. We are really playing catch up. Um, and there are emails that are getting moved to the rejected folder that are never going to get read. So there's a patron. Look at that. While I'm plugging the Patreon, the patron came up. Um, that is the best way to support us, guys. Sharing it. Sharing it. Hit us on Patreon. Get in the Discord. It goes a long way. That community's dope. Mm-hmm. We, we do men and women's groups. Like We're very involved over there. It's a lot easier to be involved in Discord. And because of the team that we have in Discord... I don't know. It's just a very dope community. I, they get a lot of my random thoughts too. Yeah, yeah. You're. I think you're. You're more active in Discord than I am overall. Oh no, I think you are. You think so? Definitely. Hmm. I, I log in in the morning after you've been up doing yoga, and there's like 15 fucking messages from you, and everybody's talking, and you're giving thoughts of the no, day, and like that happened this morning. That yeah. was it. The last few days, I've just t- said good morning in there. Hmm. Hope everyone has a good day. Yeah, I, I try to. I try to. There's a few chats that I stay active in. I'm, I'm on Discord now more than I was before because of the men's group. You're on there daily. I know because of the men's group. I, mm-hmm. I owe these guys like yeah. they they are paying me for my time to pay for the men's group and for me to not acknowledge them. Mm-hmm. I actually think that I'm going to increase the live calls. I think I might do one tomorrow night. Okay. While the kids are here, I'll just close the door and sit down and do a call with those guys. Not that this will even matter to the podcast, but um, oh. By the time this releases, our Love Is Not Enough t-shirts should be online. Oh, hell yeah. And hopefully by the time this releases, our Love Is Not Enough t-shirts will be sold out online. That would be dope. But you won't know unless you go to tobebetter.co and click on merch. Yeah. Because if it sells out that quickly, Mm -hmm. I may do another Ego Kills Talent run with a, a different logo on the back. Yeah. So... We're doing a thing, guys. We, we are expanding. This 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 channel should be at 60,000 subscribers by the time this drops. We're at like 58 now, so it's three weeks. 60,000. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Yep. That's so dope. Yep. Did you thought this is where we were going to be in December? Fuck no. Yeah. We're just two idiots on the internet. Mm-hmm. Doing the thing. Having a good time, having conversations, and we're building a community around it. Yep. Yep. They, I saw something the other day on YouTube that said um, it, the best way to build your channel now is through community. Mm. And we did that unknowingly. Yeah, and if, we did. if that's something that is going to make our YouTube channel, channel stable, mm-hmm. we have a leg up on that. We do. So also for you guys who are joining Patreon or want or are interested in Patreon, Patreon gets unlimited. Uh, I'm sorry. gets early release content as well as exclusive content as well as live streams. I guess that's the light bulb telling me to shut up and call it a day. Poltergeist. Um, it does get live streams on Sunday night, which is a Q&A where we sit and just bullshit. Um, we are looking into doing new content for Patreon that is not email related. So maybe the vlog like you had talked about or mm. what? Why'd you look at me like that? I just thought of something else I wanted to say, but I'll save it for another video. Say it. Totally random. I can't remember where I read this or where I heard it. I was interacting with somebody. And they said that I tell my person that you don't deserve me. You deserve better. Why would you plant that seed? That is a very random thought. Where did that come from? I just, I just saw it somewhere in the discord. I just saw deserve and it just triggered that whole thought. When you sell, when you tell your significant other, you deserve better. You are telling them, leave me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're absolutely planting that seed. When you say, I don't deserve you. You're telling them 
you don't, I, I don't, you don't deserve them. Right. When I hear that, I think, what did you do? So when you tell your partner that they are going to start thinking, you know what? They're right. They like, don't I, deserve I could, me. I could do better. I have more value than, than this. Yep. I'm worth more than how they're treating me. And that's, you're pushing them towards possible emotionally cheating. Start looking elsewhere. They're going to start looking at you as a placeholder, a bookmark. Instead of saying you deserve better, say I'm going to be better. Yeah. And actually start implementing the changes to be better. That's, that's that pity me bullshit. You deserve better than me. So you're saying that your perception of reality can be skewed and you can change it to make your reality better? Correct. Oh, man, imagine that. Yeah. Doing the thing, babe. Random thought. <laughs> so I, I think that we need to add that you don't deserve me or I, I don't deserve you mm -hmm. to the divorce topics. Yeah. Those are things that don't get said in relationships that needs to be right underneath the divorce. I like that, yeah. Yeah, because you're also telling your person that you don't have any self-esteem. Mm hmm and if you have somebody that is already taking advantage of you and they realize that, that you view yourself like that, they're going to manipulate and control you a oh, whole yeah. lot harder. It's game on at that point. Yep. They've won. Yep. Anything else? No. All right, guys, we're done. So gonna be, this is probably the longest podcast we've done in a while. Yeah. So food's on the way too. Dope. If you guys, if this is not out, uh, if this is out before episode 12 of the side piece comes out it's called dating i highly recommend that you guys watch that we had a very good hour and a half long conversation mm -hmm. i was very happy with the way that came out so i think that was a good one yeah yeah all right guys we'll see you on the next one bye guys <laughs>